it's five hundred dollars has come through that they put through for the, that John Blake behind closed doors that was live that every human being I spoke to yesterday asked me about. That was absolutely that was, everyone. I watched I watched that three times on Facebook. You can you, the the videos up on Facebook. I, I think it gets funnier with the rewatching. It's it, just stunning. It's brilliant. Uh, Sharon Weeks put fifty dollars in. We had an anonymous five hundred dollar donation. Wow, that's good. Just five hundred dollars from someone who was listening. Terrific. Uh, Wayne Cox put in fifty dollars. Ray White Business Sales. That we spoke a bit about yesterday. Um, they're a wonderful business that helps connect you with businesses. I mean, they know businesses better than anyone. Fifteen hundred dollars they put in. The Rundle Blinds five hundred. The Seaford and District Lions. Put in five hundred dollars as well. Good on him. And uh, an anonymous hundred dollars. That was all sort of in that period while we were cacking ourselves listening to uh, oh. Blakey do it. Um, it was good. The, I mean, it's always just before nine o'clock behind closed doors. But it's particularly good that it was there yesterday because mm. I would have been incapable of speech for the next fifteen minutes if we were still on air. <laughs> it was, it was so just too funny. It was truly superb. Uh, the funny thing was listening to it, just the, the the audio of it. It's so seamless. It sounds like you'd pre-recorded it. Like it almost sound, it sounded like that can't that can't be yeah, live. I, I, I was thinking halfway through it. Is the danger this is too good, and anyone tuning in is going to go? Oh, they've just hit the button. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. Playing yeah. It behind closed doors. Totally, totally. Uh, if you haven't seen it, that's a good point you make about watching the, the YouTube, it, Facebook what, live stream. Yeah, definitely watch it because the thing you get from the visuals of it is how in real time John's going from being your voice to my voice then. Uh, for the bulk of it, to Lucy's voice. Mm. But he's jumping back and forth like, God, morning, welcome to five nine, and then like, bah, like me. And then, dan, 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 for Lucy. And he, he's doing all of this in real time. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how you pull that off mentally, how you, how you can sort of divide it up in your head. It it was truly brilliant. And it's um, thanks to Foodland for the all the live stream technology we've got that we were able to bring that to people. Um, now, the Challenge Bowl earlier in the week presented you with a challenge, David. You had to present... Um, a seven news sizzle reel, oh, an audition tape. Uh, you were in the studio yesterday. A little bit later in the morning, we'll play your news bulletin that you read out. Oh, How did you find the experience? To be honest, I actually found it really confronting. And all I, all I really say, Will, is in a nutshell, I think your job has never been safer. <laughs> I, I, thought, uh, I think you did well. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't I think, do well at all. I, I did really badly. I was stilted. I... I, I I lack elocution. Uh, it's funny because I've been talking about Blakey taking the Mickey out of us with his impersonations. It's sort of a thing. I don't really sound like that, do I? And then you you, you hear someone mm. satirising yourself, <laughs> but then watching something like that because you know honestly, I was actually trying to do it properly. I thought I'm going to try to do this properly. Mm. I mispronounced three words. You didn't get much of a chance to pre-read, which makes it tough. Yeah. Do you you go through it at yeah. night? Yeah. yeah. Well, there was one story that had a business that had three S's in the name yeah, that, that I'd never tough. heard of, and I think the man who 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 ran that business that was uh, I think they were involved in a business collapse. I reckon he's from Azerbaijan or something because his name was totally <laughs> yeah. unpronounceable. That was a bit unkind. Yeah, that was. A, well, Otali Vilev or something like this. What we've got is video. So what we'll do a little bit later in the morning is play on the the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream the entire audition tape that David put together at the oh, Channel 7 news desk yesterday. Me. Big thanks to Channel 7 for helping us out with the undie drive as well. Yeah, that was... Giving access to the studio and some and some expert people that um, helped put it all together. It was great. It, it was great to meet so many members of the team and to bump into, you know, people who, that I already knew, like, you know, Amelia and Michael Smith. But they were lovely people, and it was very kind of them to do that. Uh, does, uh, now we but say, I felt totally out of sorts. I felt like a fish out of water there, and it's funny. Like I, I, I love sitting here, talking to you know all of our listeners. Um, I, I could walk into any newspaper office in the world and just pull up a chair and sit happily sit there all day. Like it's funny, you walk into any newspaper, you immediately know who's doing what. Mm, you do. You, well, you can always tell the features people because the desks are really nicely decorated. <laughs> The, uh, the the crime reporter has normally got like a mountain filth on his desk and probably seven empty packets of cigarettes, a bottle of whiskey in his drawer. But the um, TV, the world of a TV studio, to me, I felt really unpresentable physically, uh, which I'm sort of used to. <laughs> you were in a suit. The hair was dumb. I know, but I just felt like a fraud. I was waiting for the imposter police to come and arrest me. I tell you, we'll play the whole thing a little bit later. 
and it's worth sticking around for. Uh, the, you'll hear it here on Five to Blade Breakfast. You'll see it on all our social media. Here's a little sneak peek. Yeah. Just to, if you t bump into people today to tell them, make sure you're listening a little bit later in the morning and you'll hear the whole thing in full. Port Adelaide's bracing for a big penalty from the AFL over its handling of a sickening head clash in the showdown loss. Tom Wilson joins us now. Tom, the club's admitted fault, but wants independent doctors at all games. There you go. <laughs> I was trying to be Mr. TV with that, that one. This, I was trying to make my voice go up and then down for no good reason. <laughs> <laughs> bit of inflection, bit of light and shade. Oh, it's, it's, sometimes you watch, like particularly the ones in the eastern states, they really overdo it. Particularly the female presenters, like some of them, like no, 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 no. <laughs> Me has this report. <laughs> Some vocal gymnastics. Yeah, oh, yeah. The totally. full <laughs> version will get played on Five AA Breakfast a little bit later. It was a good challenge. You were a good sport. It was a lot of fun yesterday, and I think our listeners will very much enjoy it a little bit later. Let's take a break. News headlines coming up. I was just doing my job. I didn't think I'd get injured. The doctor said it was a routine procedure. <laughs> right. The car came out of nowhere and it smashed right into us. At DBH Lawyers, we're here to listen to your story. Our team of local South Australian lawyers will help you navigate the law and find the best way forward. We're with you. We're for you. We're DBH Lawyers. dbh.com.au it's time to raise the bar. If you're organising an event, anything from a small meeting to a grand gala, you know there are many things to consider. So trust the experts at Adelaide Convention Centre to help you elevate your vision. With the support from our team at every stage, you'll be amazed at what can happen in turning each aspect into an unforgettable experience for both you and your guests. Contact our team and discover the magic to elevate your vision at Adelaide Convention Centre. It isn't waste until you waste it. That's the catch cry from an amazing company called Eco Waste Solutions. Eco Waste Solutions is a hard waste recycling facility, not a dump, located at Williston. They'll take everything except hazardous waste and food scraps. They'll take your waste bricks, your mattresses, tyres, soil, timber, steel, concrete and more. Plus, if you pre-sort your load, you receive a 50% discount on disposal fees. Google Eco Waste Solutions Williston for more. South Australia boasts many one-of-a-kind destinations, but only one has the best local produce, super specials, cheap eats, pantry essentials and more. With over 70 traders under one roof, the Adelaide Central Market market has something for everyone. It's open every Tuesday to Saturday with late night trading Friday plus live music and free kids activities on Saturday. If you can't visit the market, order online for home delivery every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. AdelaideCentralMarket.com Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannon, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 17 minutes after 6. Already stack of listeners in the running to win this first hour early bird prize for the Undy Drive this morning. We've got one $100 Schnellers voucher and three $50 vouchers for the, um, uh, the family cook who are superb, love the family cook. They do great quality food. It's all prepared for you. The thing, the thing that's really nice, and they've got they do a lot of really good sort of Mediterranean food. Oh, they're stuffed capsicums. They tasted like your, your Greek yaya had made them. Absolutely yeah. sensational. I think the anticipation for your seven videos got people up and about early this morning, David. Uh, Sandra Britton has put in 10 bucks. She says, <laughs> well done for doing this for such a great cause. Anthony Burt put in $100. Says, good on you, David. And Will. Good on you, Anthony. Thank you for supporting, mate. Colleen King's put in $50. Thank you, Colleen. And Roger has put in $250. Wow. Roger says, thank you guys very much for doing a fantastic job. It's not a lot but I'm hoping it can make a difference to someone that's less fortunate than myself. Well, Good on you, Roger. You know what I love about this? It's great. All those donations are great. I love that. And it, not everyone, there's not a requirement. We just want the money for Catherine House and the Hunt Street Centre. But I love the technology on 5 that allows people to send a message with their donation to Yeah. It. So you get a nice insight into people and yeah, exactly. Um, what, what their thoughts are and how generous our listeners are. So thank you so much. You're all in the running to win prizes over the course of this first hour, as is everyone who donates $10 or more before 7 o'clock. Then Lucy will come in with the copper bowl and we'll, um, we'll give away those prizes. Um, 
Uh, we'll get to those. Uh, we'll get to some more of those uh, donations in a moment. I can see a few more coming in, but let's do news headlines first. Now on this Thursday, the third of August, police have reported a 28-year-old woman for multiple traffic offences yesterday. It's alleged she reversed into a parked van in a supermarket car park at Brighton before rear-ending another car at the intersection of Main South Road and Candy Road, O'Halloran Hill. The red Mazda 3 drove away erratically, narrowly, uh, narrowly missing other cars. It was later found in the middle of Quinvale Road at Hallett Cove after hitting a kerb, smashing off its front tyre. She's not having a very good day in the, behind the wheel, is she? Is she drunk? Is she on drugs? Is she hopeless? Ding, Probably ding, ding. Uh, the driver allegedly blew 0.215. Oh, God. She also tested positive to methamphetamine. Oh, righty, eh? She's lost her licence for 12 months and her car's been impounded for 28 days. She sounds like quite the catch, this one. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <Was> <laughs> it? You just totally wreck your life doing stuff like that. Let's see what happens to her penalty-wise, though. What is happening to your life when you're doing driving around drunk doing meth on a Wednesday? Yeah, exactly. The the week? What, what are you exactly? doing? Not even a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, what are you getting up to in your spare time, mate? <laughs> so I know what you mean, though. For. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do yeah. know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Melbourne's won back the top spot as Australia's preferred city holiday destination. Oh, yeah. Who paid for this one, the Victorian Tourism Department? Roy Morgan Research has found nearly 2.8 million Australians are hoping to take a trip to Melbourne. Why puts, would you do that? It puts them ahead of Gold Coast. That blows my mind, which became yeah. the most popular city for interstate, uh, interstate tourists during lockdown. That's uh, we've, we've, really we've, surprising. We've all, we've all, particularly now that Dan's charging us, wants to charge us $5 a day for the privilege of being in Victoria because mm. he's blown all his money by destroying the economy and misleading the Commonwealth Games people into thinking they were going to be, hold, be able to hold the event there, thus exposing the, the, the taxpayers of Victoria to massive, massive uh, costs. But I think just think as a, as a place to go, what more is there for, for us in South Australia to learn about Melbourne? You How? Know, there's a, okay, the coffee's good. Or, you know, the, the atmosphere of the laneway bars is good. They've got a few... Half decent restaurants. Yeah, they've got a big oval. And then what? But I think, isn't, isn't the oval it? Like, how much of the 2.8 million is bolstered by anyone planning to go see their football team play away ever? Because. Yeah, of course. Three quarters of every trip you make has to be to Melbourne if you're going to go see your team play away. That's exactly right. That's that's <laughs> Port, Port v Carlton mm. the other Friday. Mm. Crows v Melbourne the other weekend. That's, that's what it's it is. It's a huge proportion of That's just what you yeah. have to do because they. They run the, the football show. It's, there's nothing there that needs to be discovered anymore. Uh, new figures reveal a record number of Australians are taking on extra work to cope with the rising cost of living. Data from the Bureau of Statistics shows there are 950,000 people holding down at least two jobs. That's an increase of 89,000 over the past 12 months. That tells a story, doesn't it? That's a lot of people, isn't it? Because there was, uh, that, that's actually, there's so much in that. Because I think the, the Reserve Bank and economists have been surprised that the degree to which households have withstood interest rate rises and businesses, people haven't lost jobs as quickly as they expect. And this is horrible stuff. This is what economists look at, that people haven't had to be forced to sell their homes, dropping house prices as quickly as a lot of people thought was going to happen if you had this many interest rate rises. But so much of it is we have such low unemployment that people have just gone and gotten another job. Mm. Yeah, And that's what probably distinguishes this period of economic hardship than any other. The unemployment rate's so low... It's amazing. That's how many pe that's how many people in households have said, oh, "I'll just work twice as much." And the thing is, a lot of the jobs that are available are the sorts of jobs that work quite well as a bit of a side hustle, like hospitality, retail. You know, those two areas. Uh, if anyone listening has got a second job mm. in the last while, give us a ring, folks, and tell us what you're doing. Eight double T three double O double O. Luke and Craig Moore's called in. Morning, to you, Luke. Good morning. Hey, Mad. I um. I'm South Australian, born and bred. I love Victoria. Love it. But not what you think. I can't stand Melbourne. Mm. Yeah. But what I love is the country. Yeah. My country. Their laws are so much so much more relaxed. So I, I, um, I'm a hunter. Like, I like to um, help in the environment by, um, you know, shooting ferals, you know, foxes and yeah. Yeah, um, sure. things like that. You can't do that in South Australia legally. You can do that on Crown land in Victoria. You can, the, the camping is free. Everything out in okay. the high country or, or the, the state national park is open. It's awesome. In South Australia, you, you've got 
beautiful countryside all around the hill. You've got all these national parks. And guess what? You can't even fight in the job. <laughs> Luke, thank you. It's great I, insight. I reckon actually. that's a very good point because mm, I would happen if, if if I was if we were having school holidays and like we were about a team meeting at home in case. So why don't we go for a long drive through country Victoria? Mm, beautiful. I would go. Yes, please. Mm. I would love that. First night, stay in Mount Gambier, dinner at the barn, get a steak in. Then the next day, off you go. Great Ocean Road. You do the Great Ocean Lawn. Yeah, that kind of stuff. But then, like you know, driving up to Bendigo. Bendigo is beautiful. Mm. Ballarat's beautiful. All over the other side, round towards Orbos, through to Lakes Entrance. Or... Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. But you don't need to go to Melbourne. <laughs> um, that's the kind of, they're beautiful places. The kind of place, you know what they should do? They should hold a major event in those regional areas. That's an idea. Don't you think? Yeah, Wouldn't yeah. that be a nice way of saying I thank you? I wonder if there's any sort of major events yeah. that um, would be keen to go. They should have thought of that. <laughs> Greece is offering to give tourists a free holiday for those who had their trip cut short in the recent wildfires on the island of Rhodes. Well, Thousands were forced to evacuate when the fire broke out last month. The Greek Prime Minister spoke to Good Morning Britain, saying the situation is back to normal. The roads today is more welcoming than ever. The uh, island is back to uh, normal. Uh, and for all of those uh, whose holidays were cut short as a result of the wildfires, uh, the Greek government, uh, in cooperation with the local authorities, will offer one week of free holidays on roads uh, next uh, spring. 9pm is the time tonight. Uh, you want to have your phone charged and ready to go if you bought a ticket in the $100 million Powerball draw. Um, that amount was won in June by a Sydney uh, father. The lot spokesman, Matt Hart, says if you're tonight's winner, it'll be 9 o'clock. That's when they start calling. If it's registered, it means we've got perhaps a contact detail, a name. So, you know, I'll get straight on the phone. Usually before 9 p.m., that call will happen. And um, as I'm dialing the digits, I'm very much willing that person to pick up the phone. I think there's some really good news for you. <laughs> yeah, really good news. It's an understatement. <laughs> um, the weather for today, right now outside, it is 14.4. It's actually really nice. Top of 23 originally forecast a bit of rain today, but now it's not going to be. So it's just 23 and really nice. Two days ago, they were saying we're going to get 10 mil. Yeah, that <laughs> looks like it's moved to tomorrow. That's so not a criticism. I'm happy no, with it. No, it's fantastic news. So 19 and up to 9 mils tomorrow and then a cold weekend. Tops of just 14 Saturday and Sunday, but thankfully no rain about the place. Tom Wren's in the studio with us. Uh, Keaton Hall Plumbers, your local plumber for block drains, trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. Morning, Rennie. Morning, Will. Morning, David. Uh, we'll get into it. Uh, I reckon one of the goals of the tournament last night oh. in the World Cup, um, let's have a listen to the audio. It was an absolute stunner for Panama. It was one of the best goals I've ever seen, Rennie. I mean, at any level. Panama. Yeah, I'm amazed Panama scored. They've really struggled in, well, the, in the last... But they've, they scored twice. I think, did they not? We've got it now. At the big stage. And it's Cox. Oh! Start. 69 seconds and they have come from the bench and everywhere to celebrate an historic moment for Panama fantastic technique on that free kick so difficult for Pedro Maniac he's curled in and hit the side netting it's a fantastic strike it was 40 yards, that audio, um, thanks yeah. to Optus, 40 yards out and it hit the top corner. It was... Direct free kick. It unbelievable. Bent, it bent the width of the goals, yeah. essentially, or half the width, yep. into the top corner. She's no, tapped into a inner Cristiano, has she? It, it, was, yeah, it was extraordinary. It looked like that. Roberto Carlos. I mean, yeah, the, right. the distance <laughs> on it was... And, and no keeper in the world was saving it either. No. It was... It was unbelievable. They did lose the match 6-3, which so it was well. a shootout. It was a, a huge scoreline in the end. France won that game. But what about the results overnight? So uh, Brazil has been knocked out. Mm. They had a draw with South Africa. Italy also knocked out and Argentina. So oh. Jamaica goes through. Sweden goes through. I think it's great for the you know non-traditional footballing mm. nations to have their sides go through. Like The, the scenes for South Africa and Jamaica were... Well, wild. It was great. Good it's sad them. for Brazil, and a lot of South Australians would have been particularly sad because there was a, there was a chance that they were going to be back back in Adelaide mm -hmm. for the round of sixteen if they'd gone through. That's true. The expectation was that they'd play Colombia uh, here in Adelaide, but that's not going to happen. But sad for their um, veteran Marta, the the woman they call the Brazilian Pele. I think she's thirty eight, and this is going to be her last mm. World Cup. So. Her last ever World Cup match played here in, on Australian soil last night. Yeah, so a disappointing finish for them. But um, the World Cup continues to roll on. And watch this space with Damien Hardwick. Is he a genius for playing it out the way he has? Leaving Richmond, monster five-year deal now reportedly on the table. 
Uh, yeah, I, I reckon if you could carve out your career where it ultimately you achieve everything you possibly can in a job and then in your twilight years you spend it in the most nice climate in the country getting paid an exorbitant amount of money, I'd say that's playing it absolutely yeah. perfectly. Oh, he's been very, very shrewd. <laughs> For a team that's got the lowest expectations and no fan base. Well, no one will, if it goes badly, no one will notice. Yeah, it's yeah. like a you know, tree falls in a forest. That's right. <laughs> Dozens of Suns fans <laughs> up in arms <laughs> after seventh straight loss. Yeah, and then when they pay him out, he goes back to Italy. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gee whiz. Good on you, Rennie. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Tom. Ken Old Plumber's your local plumber for block drains. Trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. If you're in a window, and not just anything will do. Just call Statesman Window. Back to redirect to you. Nobody beats Statesman Windows. Not on quality and certainly not on service. Windows, sliding doors, bifolds and more. Made right here in Adelaide. Factory direct to you. For windows when and where you want them, call Statesman Windows. States.com.au Windows when and where you want them. Windows when and where you want them. Did you know that about one in three people will develop shingles in their lifetime, regardless of how healthy they may feel? Don't wait to find out if you're one of them. To learn more, talk to your healthcare professional and visit noshingles.com.au. Sponsored by GSK Melbourne. Here at 5AA, we're all about supporting local. The Flurio Food Festival has 60 events throughout August, showcasing the best food and beverages in the region. Find out more at fluriofoodfestival.com. With IGA's Community Give Back Sale, you can make big savings. And help support local causes. Just look for tickets on specials, like Tresemme Shampoo or Conditioner 940 mil Selected Variety, $7 each. Half price at your local IGA. Offer ends August 8, while stocks last. Excludes IGA local. Grocer and Foodland. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Mostly sunny in 23 with the 6.30 news. I'm Kendall Brenty. Planning a function? Speak to the Adelaide Convention Centre team to elevate your vision for your next event. The Greens say an increase to a raft of benefits is welcome, but some payments still don't go far enough. Job seeker will lift by $56 a fortnight from mid-September. Rent assistance will rise, as will pensions and the single parenting payment. But Green Social Services spokeswoman Janet Rice says the boost should really be closer to what was provided during COVID. More people were in a position to be able to enter the workforce. People reported they were able to you know, get their car fixed. They were able to yeah. afford to pay for the public transport yeah, fares to get off to job interviews. <laughs> they could pay for their medications that enabled them to really help get their life under control and get themselves back into work. The federal government's broadening its inquiry into the insurance sector as premiums and complaints skyrocket. Complaints have surged by as much as 76% over the past year, while the cost of insuring a car, home or contents has jumped by 20%. There are concerns it could lead to more people dropping their cover. Police have reported a woman for multiple traffic offences after three separate crashes yesterday. Abby Smith has details. It's alleged she reversed into a parked van in a supermarket car park at Brighton before rear-ending another car at the intersection of Main South Road and Candy Road at O'Halloran Hill. The Red Mazda 3 drove away erratically, narrowly missing other cars. It was later found in the middle of Quinvale Road at Hallett Cove after hitting a kerb and smashing off its front tyre. The driver allegedly blew point two one five. She also tested positive to methamphetamine. The 28-year-old woman from Salisbury East was reported for drink driving, driving under the influence, failing to give details at the scene of a crash and other traffic offences. She's lost her licence for 12 months and her car's been impounded for 28 days. She'll face court at a later date. Parents are launching legal action against a number of daycare centres over allegations against a former childcare worker. The families from Brisbane and Sydney will seek compensation, claiming the centres breached their duty of care. The 45-year-old man's been charged with more than 1,600 offences against 91 victims. An inquiry into the handling of the Bruce Lerman trials accusing the chief prosecutor of lying to the ACT Supreme Court. 
Sophie Upcroft has details. The Australian newspaper is reporting that the head of the inquiry into the handling of the Bruce Luhrmann rape trial has found that Mr Drumgold lost his objectivity during the prosecution of Mr Luhrmann over rape allegations and that Mr Drumgold knowingly lied to the Chief Justice during the trial. They say it also finds that all of the allegations made by Mr Drumgold which sparked the public inquiry were baseless. The 600-page document is due to be released publicly at the end of the month. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump say they're confident he will be found innocent. A grand jury in the US has voted to indict him on four counts. He'll appear in court tomorrow. And Greece is offering to give tourists a free holiday for those who had to cut their trip short due to recent wildfires on the island of Rhodes. Thousands were forced to evacuate when the fires broke out last month. Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis spoke to Good Morning Britain saying the situation is back to normal. The roads today is more welcoming than ever. The uh, island is back to uh, normal. Uh, and for all of those uh, whose holidays were cut short as a result of the wildfires, uh, the Greek government, uh, in cooperation with the local authorities, will offer one week of free holidays on roads uh, next uh, spring. Turning to 5AA Sport. Ken Hall Plumbers, your local plumber for block drains. Trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Port Adelaide's players will hit the training track later this morning as they prepare for Saturday night's critical clash against Geelong. The Power are clinging on to second spot after three straight losses, but must win to stay there. And they'll have to replace injured duo Aaliyah Aaliyah and Lockie Jones with skipper Tom Jonas a big chance to come back in. Still on footy, Gold Coast is reportedly a step closer to signing Damien Hardwick as their next coach. Chief Executive Mark Evans has flown to Italy where Hardwick is on holidays. The two will meet face to face. Meantime, Richmond great Matthew Richardson has told Wild World of Sports he's not surprised the former Tigers coach would end up at another club and the Suns are a good fit. No, I wasn't because I just thought the way it all happened, I felt like Dimmer just wanted a break and he could still have it while this football season was happening and then jump into it next year. A huge night at the FIFA Women's World Cup has seen football powerhouses bow out and an international icon retire. Argentina, Italy and Brazil have all exited in the group stage, while Minnow, South Africa and Jamaica have progressed to the round of 16. It spells the end of the international career for Brazilian star Marta, the all-time top scorer for both men's or women's World Cups. Former Matilda Heather Garrick has told Optus Sport she'll be remembered as a pioneer for women's football. Not only in Brazil, but worldwide. Marta was who Sam Kerr is to the young girls today and boys today. And that is the 5AA Sport. Now the 5AA forecast. Pack away the bikinis and boardies, pull out the woolies and get your brakes checked at Automasters. Mostly sunny, heading for 23 today. Showers tomorrow, 19. Cloudy on Saturday, 14. And partly cloudy for Sunday, also 14. At the moment, 15. More news as it happens on 5AA. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannan, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au. Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 24 minutes to 7. Police and weather coming up very shortly. 7 o'clock this morning, we're going to draw a host of names out of the Copper Bowl and give away some prizes this morning because people are donating to the Undy Drive in their drives. 5AAndyDrive.com.au is the place to go. Four prizes to give away for anyone who donates $10 or more over the course of this first hour of the program this morning. One $100 Chanel's voucher, three vouchers for the family cook. Um, that'll get your, your food sorted for a, a little while uh, and it'll be spectacular food as well. They do such a wonderful job. Michelle, I just note, um, is uh, in the running. $20. Well done, 5AA. We must care for each other in our community. I wish I could give um, uh, more. Much love, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Yen May Tang has donated $200. Thank you, Yen. Uh, Karen Nan uh, Caro has donated $20. Nina, $100. Another anonymous for $10. Thank you so much to you wonderful, generous people. We, we appreciate it so much. And uh, uh, we can tell you, we get, we're in constant contact with Catherine House and the Hutt Street Centre. It means... So much to them, um, all this money, because they, they do such a wonderful job supporting people. What time's the COVID safe copper bowl coming out? Seven, uh, seven o'clock, just seven after seven o'clock. Okay. I think Lucy will come in, or just at seven to sort of um, get it all happening. Excellent. Draw the draw some winners out of the uh, 
out of the bowl. We're still getting a lot of feedback uh, around the discussion we started yesterday about the big increase in prices for the Royal Show. That's for the tickets at the gate. You can obviously buy the uh, tickets in advance, um, which are cheaper, even though they have increased this year. Pre-sale for adults going up from 24.50 to 26. Kids 15.50 to 16.50. Certainly significantly more affordable than uh, the weekend prices for walk-ups, uh, which are up by um, uh, $9 for adults, to 40, up from 33 to 42 and kids from 20 to 30 um, One of our listeners points out that the, um, our good friends at the RAA are offering 20% off show tickets um, for a limited number of, of, of show tickets, which is a, a good deal. Mm. But um, I've got to say, the extent to which... People fired up about this story. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments about it on Facebook, uh, on not just our website, but on the advertisers' website where they picked up the comments we made on air about it yesterday and ran with them. Um, they've done a piece in the paper about it today. It's 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 really sad. I reckon. Like I think for for such a beloved organisation, and you know we 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 bend over backwards every year. I love the show. I've loved it since I was a kid. I love it now. As an adult, but I think the manner in which this whole thing has been handled is regrettable, to say the least. There was a, a, a you know, you would have thought the other day when we were talking to Will Rayner, the new bloke, that the the big headline takeout for um, the show this year was that Bluey was coming. Mm. There was there was no candid um, sort of uh, explanation as to why prices had 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 to be increased so much. And I think a lot of people, um, it shows that I think the Royal Show has overestimated the extent to which it is adored in South Australia. Because a lot of people have have looked at this and gone, you know what, stuff that, I'm not, I'm not doing it well, anymore. Well, and m maybe you can sneak this kind of thing by if you're not in the midst of a crisis where everything's going up significantly. And people are having to make, like the league news item every day is people having to go without. We've had talkers well, get, on the program get, We've been about talking about getting extra jobs. People can't buy scourers at the moment. I mean, that's the environment in which you're trying to sneak a, a, a cost increase in. Body wash, things like that. I actually think if they'd come out and been forthright in saying, we've tried our best to prevent this, but the, trying to get staff has never costed more. Yeah. Trying to get uh, transport, uh, the costs for food and bits and pieces. I think everyone would get it and go, well... well exactly. And that, that because they... Then they would be, would have been trading on the fact that they have a relationship with the South Australian people. Correct. That is deep enough and warm enough where they could get away with being honest. I mean, getting getting away with being honest. There's there's a quaint and old fashioned idea. <laughs> if they said, "Look, folks, seriously, we almost went broke. Mm. We didn't have the show at all for two years. We've had to make some really regrettable decisions." Now, there's a quote from some PR anonymous PR spokeswoman for the show in the paper today, where <laughs> I, I quote verbatim she describes the the new pricing arrangements as quote a win for everyone oh right so someone should tell everyone <laughs> well by everyone the pre-sale tickets have gone up a little bit mm. the 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 ticket booth t tickets have gone up by they've skyrocketed astronomically so if that's a win for everyone i don't see what a loss looks like uh, 3rd of August today, uh, a, a birth, uh, it's an 82nd birthday to this famous voice. Lesson in vegetable preparation wouldn't be complete without a recipe for a tian. A tian is a traditional dish from Provence. It's named for the earthenware baking dish in which the vegetables are cooked. Uh, that's, of course, the voice of Martha Stewart, who, um, you know... Pretty colourful old career, Martha, it turns out in the end. <laughs> I'll say. Um, a lot of time, you know, decorating your house in the Hampstons style, making tiarns and terrines and ballotines and whatever you, whatever French provincial food you like, and also a little bit of insider trading. Yeah, a little bit of insider trading. <laughs> I, I was reading uh, this morning a piece in um, uh, Newsweek from July 2002 describing... The interview she did when the allegations came to hand on the CBS early show during her regular segment, during which the CBS producers said to her, look, this is a big news story. We can't not ask you about it on our morning show. And she said, fine, but I'm not sitting down for an interview. It can only be during my regular segment. So during the summer salad segment, as she's chopping up a cabbage, 
the host starts trying to ask her about insider trading, <laughs> and she says, "I just want to focus on my salad," <laughs> uh, which is just you know uh, magnificently absurd. And this is a good news story. Uh, artificial intelligence could almost halve the workload of radiologists, according to a Swedish study. Mammograms are usually analysed by two radiologists, but AI was used to predict cancer risk, and the a analysis was carried out by then just one radiologist. Unless, of course, the AI flagged a high-risk scan, which prompted a second human to come in and have a look. Lead scientist Dr. Christina Lang says the aim of using AI is not to replace radiologists, but to help them reduce their workload. The big risk is that if we use AI alone, it will lead to too many false positives. My hope is that using AI and screening will lead to a screening program with a higher effect that we can further reduce the mortality of breast cancer. I'm happy AI errs on the side of false positive as opposed to false negative. See, I, I don't find that story alarming at all. I actually no. think that's a good example mm. of AI working. I mean, my dad spent most of his career uh, creating this thing called the Quality Assurance Program, which was a biochemical computer program that Flinders Medical Centre on sold to um, uh, uh, hospitals, laboratories um, all over the world, mainly in Southeast Asia. And it was a computer program that set an optimum sort of level of uh, struggling to explain this because my dad and I like what we've done in our lives could not be any more different. Mm. It was like a benchmark for tests for blood results to show if you had cancer and stuff like that. Sure. And it was computer driven. And it was the computer that went, hang on, the numbers we're getting the numbers you're getting for your 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 bloods and your Billy Rubens and mm. your proteins and whatever, there's a problem there. So it wasn't an individual looking at that. It was the computer mm. that would go, ping, look at this, that please, person. Yep. So the person had to interact with it, but it was the computer that was doing it because of the bulk of tests. That, I mean, that's exactly... That's, this is an extension of that, in my mind. Co yeah, completely. It, if you, I think anyone wanting to make the argument about the benefits of AI would talk a lot about the medical field advancements, improvements in surgery outcomes, improvement in finding new treatments for diseases, antibiotic-resistant drugs, uh, a, a bacteria that we spoke about previously, yeah. things like this. That's the, that's the side that is why this stuff's being investigated mm. and developed and worked on because it's got huge, However, huge promise. What, what if the AI radiologist says that the machine knows it's never going to get complete control of this planet <laughs> unless it starts wiping out humanity? Doing a whole bunch of false positive <laughs> negatives. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all fine. Another day, and everyone's good. <laughs> Nothing to worry about here. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. That's right. Uh, I'm afraid I can't do that. Yeah, let's let's hope that's <laughs> the radiology machine doesn't become self-aware. That that's wouldn't be good right. for anyone. Exactly. Um, lots of texts on the Dutton's text line with regard to the Royal Show and pricing again. Uh, just a reminder, though, if you missed it at six fifteen, we played a little snippet of David Pemberthy reading the Seven News at the desk in the studio earlier. We will be, later in the morning, playing the full video. He's on audition oh, yeah. tape, yes. uh, and you can watch it online. Uh, probably a, over and over again to your pleasure. Yeah, um, yeah, pleasure if you're into, you know, sadism. <laughs> it's, it's handy for any TV executive who, who might be casting around thinking, you know, would we uh, ever want to add an extra person to the team? Take my name off the list because this is. <laughs> I don't know. You might the phone. Hope your phone's on. You might you might ring off the hook after this morning when we play. When we play, uh, yeah, only with mates taking the you know what out of me. Uh, the Volkswagen T1 Allspace, the seven seater, that's perfect for weekends away camping trips and the crazy Saturday sports rush. Uh, people still not particularly impressed with the, the the ticket price at the Royal Show nor the explanations. Uh, one here is saying, what does the cover charge for the show buy? It still costs a fortune once you're inside. We're a family of four. Never been able to attend as a whole family ever, and my oldest is 18. They really need to make it accessible. Nick says, hi, guys. It's not just the price of tickets. Imagine the prices inside the show if they've gone up. And another one, fees for all vendors have increased as well at the Royal Show. As we said at the start, love the show. Not going out of our way to cause them a headache on this, but, you know, it's our job to listen to what our listeners are saying and, and be guided by that. And mm. these are highly indicative comments of public sentiment on this issue. Police and weather next. Thanks, Will, and good morning. Mansfield Park, a crash there. Grand Junction Road near Hanson Road. Walkley Heights, current at Stovey Pole. Bridge Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road is closed, affecting outbound. And Cudley Creek, that rock slide is still continuing, getting cleaned up. Gorge Road near Torrance Hill Road. 
Starting to get busy south road at Edwardstown with the camera doors road at Ascot Park. See your local Goodyear Auto Care experts for all your tyre and service needs. Plus, your chance to win the ultimate 2023 NRL Grand Final package for two. Conditions apply. See in store for details. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Are you ready for massive Mazda savings? Mawson Lakes Mazda is having a huge demo clearance across the entire Mazda range. We are overstocked on current model Mazda demos that need to go. So be quick to snap up a demo deal in your favourite model and colour. There is no better time to take advantage of these amazing deals. Be quick, stocks won't last at these prices. Mawson Lakes Mazda, just a short drive from the city, Salisbury Highway. Will retirement living suit you? You're invited to Aveo's free open home events to get a sneak peek of the lifestyle you could enjoy. Come along with family and friends to explore our communities, inspect our display homes, discover our social activities and chat with our friendly team. With four events across Adelaide from the 5th to the 10th of August, there's sure to be one near you. Take the first step and search Aveo Open Home today. RSVP is essential. Disney and Cameron McIntosh's Mary Poppins is now playing at the Festival Theatre for a limited season. And audiences are absolutely raving. Spellbinding, unforgettable, jaw-dropping. And the Adelaide advertiser hailed it a breathtaking super spectacle. Final tickets are selling fast. Book now at Ticketek. Get ready to indulge in the ultimate travel experience at Phil Hoffman Travel's inaugural Luxury Day, Sunday the 6th of August from 10am till 3pm at the magnificent Ayers House. Speak to our luxury experts and operators, enjoy exclusive offers, win incredible prizes and discover the world's most exclusive and luxurious travel styles and destinations with canapes and champagne. Register your place at pht.com.au. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannan, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au. Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Yeah. 10 to 7, police and weather in just a moment. 8223 0000 is our number. You can text us on the Dutton's text line. Remember, any uh, donation of $10 or more. Uh, between now and 7 o'clock puts you in the running to win one of four prizes. They will be announced in just a few moments' time. Hannah Marsh at the Bureau joins us. Hannah, it suddenly looks like today is going to be a spectacular day. Yeah, absolutely. And just even having a look at the minimums, strangely, our minimum of 13.9 actually occurred uh, just before 9.30pm last night. So <laughs> it was really around 14 to 15 degrees much of the night, and we're currently sitting on 14.5. It was a pleasant experience waking up this morning. I instinctively grabbed my overcoat as I was heading to the car and I got outside and I went, oh, I don't need that thing today. It's beautiful already. It's going to be a lovely yeah, day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, as you mentioned, heading for a maximum of 23 degrees in the city, 24 for Elizabeth, 22 at Glenelg, 21 for Norlunga and 22 at Mount Barker. And it generally will be a sunny day. We'll start seeing the cloud increasing during the afternoon and there is just the slight chance of seeing a shower developing as we head into the late evening. But more overnight, we'll see that front come through with showers. They will uh, ease as we head into the afternoon period tomorrow, but that temperature dropping down to 19 degrees for Friday and we're looking at just 14 for Saturday and Sunday. But the good news is the showers will clear, so we're just looking at a slight chance of seeing a shower around on Saturday. Then uh, for Sunday, we're looking at partly cloudy. Good work, Anna. Thank Thanks, you for Anna. that. Let's head to St. Paul. Senior Constable Kate Dawson joins us. Kate, uh, there's been a serious crash at Northfield. Yeah, this was about 4.30am this morning. Emergency services were called to Bryan's Road in Northfield after a car travelling north left the road and collided with a stobie pole. So Brian's Road is currently closed in both directions between Hoods Road and South Terrace and we're just asking motorists, um, yeah, maybe on the morning commute to please avoid the area and find a different route. Our major crash officers have just arrived at the scene. They're going to be assisting with the investigation but we expect Brian's Road will be closed for several more hours this morning. Kate, also two girls have been arrested for theft down south. 
Yeah, this was about 9pm last night. Two females entered a service station on Marion Road at Marion and stole some cash and vapes before going across the road to another service station at Mitchell Park and attempting to steal items from that store. However, here that they were unsuccessful. So the two uh, women or girls <laughs> fled the scene on foot before patrols arrived. Police, with the assistance of police dog Zeus, searched the area and a short time later located the two suspects at a nearby home address and placed them under arrest. Here we also recovered the stolen cash and the vapes. So unbelievably, these are two 12-year-old girls um, that had committed these crimes. So they've both been right. charged with theft and refused bail and will appear, be appearing in the Adelaide Youth Court today. Mm. Well, my first job was at that BP there on Marion Road, Mitchell Park, just next to the Marion Hotel. Nothing that dramatic ever happened when I was there, luckily. 12 years old, just shocking. Mm. Thank you for that. Senior Constable Kate Dawson from SAPO. I wonder if it happened less in part because of how many staff would have worked there at the time. Where now you get one staff member probably on late at night. I bet when you were there... Well, we weren't open at night. And you weren't open at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Used to shut at 6 o'clock on mm. weekdays and mm. shut at noon on Saturdays. Uh, let's head to the United States. Tim Lester is in Washington. What a 48 hours it's been in, uh, in that part of the world. Uh, we start, uh, Tim, with the, um, uh, the suggestion in the, the wee hours of the morning here in Australia that there's been something of a security risk and a, a potential active shooter situation in Washington. What have you learned about that, uh, that situation? Well, it's increasingly appearing, guys, that it, it, uh, uh, it was a hoax or something similar, a police are claiming they received an emergency call uh, to suggest that an active shooter was loose in the uh, a Senate building just adjacent, just over a road from the main Capitol building with the dome that we all recognise. The building evacuated 200 police sent in, many with uh, military-style uh, long guns, as they call them here, uh, to search the building. Others who couldn't get out of the building told to... Uh, uh, stay in place to, to uh, essentially secure themselves and um, police emerging uh, an hour or so later to say the search was continuing and they were checking but that at that stage they hadn't um, been able to find either a shooter or to confirm that there had been any shots it may therefore just wind up being a, 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 a scam and a fuss about nothing but a sign of how on edge uh, things are when just 200 metres down the road or so, uh, a courtroom is now surrounded by media awaiting another appearance by the 45th President of the United States. So, Tim, in your assessment, mate, how serious are these charges against the former President? Uh, the, the charges, I think, are the most serious yet not even necessarily in uh, the amount of jail time they might, they might carry, though uh, I, I think the, the most serious of them has a potential jail time of 20 years, and there's only four of them, not 40 as there are in the documents case. Uh, but they really go to the heart of American democracy. Uh, they accuse uh, the then president of actively trying to overturn the result of the 2020 presidential election and they make quite clear uh, that they will demonstrate in court that the president lied and knew right throughout uh, that he hadn't won the election but perpetuated that lie uh, as he went through various means to try and overturn it. Um, his lawyers counter on that very point. They say he didn't know then that the election was a fraud and still doesn't still believes that it, uh, that it was uh, fraudulent. So that's where yeah. the argument will hinge, but they are very serious charges. And, and Tim, crucially, none of this is likely to be resolved before the presidential election next year, is it? None, no. Uh, and in fact, uh, the prosecutions in all of the three cases, criminal cases now before Donald Trump, will have a hard time getting the trials to court before to be, to to, to, uh, to a resolution um, before the presidential election because Donald Trump's lawyers will be working overtime to delay it. There's no doubt, and they've already been unapologetic. They want these cases held after the 2024 presidential election in November next year. And, of course, that raises the possibility of a newly elected President Trump pardoning himself.
Yeah. It's just extraordinary. Which you, you'd be not, not in the well, least surprised if he did it. Tim Lester for 7 News in uh, Washington, D.C. You'll see uh, Tim Lester's excellent work on 7 at 6 tonight. Lots of great donations coming in at the moment, and all these people are in the running to win one of four prizes, the Chanelas uh, $100 voucher or one of three, uh, the Family Cook $50 vouchers that we've got. So that includes Helen, who donated $25. Thank you, Helen. Emma and Brett donated 100 Say, so great job, 5 A. Love the way you support Hutt Street and Catherine, Catherine House. We well, you know what the reality is. It's our listeners. It's you guys that support Catherine mm. House. We, just so we, we tell you to do it. We just sit here talking with <laughs> And you. it's all the wonderful work that our listeners do that um, that helps out these charities. Ian Field says, donation for the Reg Grundies. Great cause, great show. The Movie Bowl, not only educating Lucy, but Blakey, brilliant, especially yesterday. Thank you, Ian and Morford Vale with $50. Sally's chucked in 10 bucks. says, fantastic charities. And Ben Smedley, $20, says, great work, 5AA. All in the running to win some prizes, Luce. Yes, we've got four prizes up for grabs. First one, $100 to Chanel's right. voucher. Here's the copper COVID safe bowl of prizing. Random choice. Oops. Chanel's $100 voucher goes to Nina. Congratulations, Nina. Nina. Nina, if you just give me a buzz, 8223 then I'll get that to you. Now, the other three... Do you think that's 99 Luftballons, Nina, or a different Nina? I think it is. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Surely it is do, do, one and the same. Do, 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 do. He's always texting in. Yeah, yeah. furious about the show prices. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have three $50 The Family Cook vouchers supporting SA families with fresh and delicious ready-made meals. Thefamilycook.com.au in cost of living, of course. That would be an excellent help. Three people up for a $50 voucher. If you could please call me, 8223 0000. Those people are Ian. Thank you, Ian. Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa. And Colleen. Colleen. All right, four winners. If your, name was, if your name was called out then and you've just donated, please give us a ring this morning. Now, of course... Thank you. <laughs> you saw the bowl and got excited. Yeah. Okay, the envelope, please. Oh, you just drew it out, did you, Luce? I, I haven't did. even seen the bowl. Sorry, the bowl is here. here. Oh, okay, there it is. It was, I was, I was so, I'm so excited by it. Oh, here we go. Now, if well, it was John Blake yesterday, if we raise $1,500 by 8.30 a.m., Rowie and Timmy G will complete a challenge today. Rowie so, and Timmy G? Rowie and Timmy G are coming in. The afternoon chaps are coming in this morning. Not sure why or what's going on yet, but $1,500 is the target, and Rowie and Timmy G will be put through their paces. We don't, so we don't know what it is yet. Stick around after the 7 o'clock news. Everyone gets to find out what the challenge oh, is in exciting. five minutes' time. Stick around. Okay, good on you, Luce. Well, you heard the girl. <laughs> She's the boss. <laughs> Stick around. I'm excited. I can't wait to find out what they've got to do. That's next. I was just doing my job. I didn't think I'd get injured. The doctor said it was a routine procedure. Right. The car came out of nowhere and it smashed right into us. At DBH Lawyers, we're here to listen to your story. Our team of local South Australian lawyers will help you navigate the law and find the best way forward. We're with you. We're for you. We're DBH Lawyers. DBH.com.au. Here at 5AA, we're all about supporting local. Circare Clinical Research Alliance in Adelaide is looking for people who experience migraines and headaches for a clinical trial. Visit painmedsa.com and click research today. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Online, on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM, Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Mostly sunny and 23 with the 7 o'clock news. I'm Kendall Brantig. Planning a function? Speak to the Adelaide Convention Centre team to elevate your vision for your next event. Legislation has passed Parliament giving an income boost to welfare recipients across the nation. More from Zach De Silva. People on the job seeker payment will get an extra $56 a fortnight as part of Labor's safety net bill. Commonwealth rent assistance will also increase, as will pensions and the single parent payment. Social Services Minister Amanda Rishworth has told Parliament it's about giving a leg up to Australia's most vulnerable. More support is on its way for those who need it most. 
worst. But Greens Senator Janet Rice says the increased job seeker rate is still not enough. There's no point keeping people living in poverty. It doesn't help anyone get back to work. The higher payments will kick in from mid-September. New figures reveal a record number of Australians are taking on extra work to cope with the rising cost of living. Data from the Bureau of Statistics shows there are 950,000 people holding down at least two jobs. That's an increase of 89,000 over the past 12 months. Police have reported a woman for multiple traffic offences after three separate incidents yesterday. It's alleged she reversed into a parked van at Brighton before rear-ending another car at O'Halloran Hill. Her car drove away, narrowly missing other cars before it was found at Hallett Cove after hitting a kerb, smashing off its front tyre. The driver allegedly blew point two one five and tested positive to meth. The 28-year-old has been reported for drink driving, driving under the influence and other traffic offences. She's lost her licence for 12 months. Scientists believe they've discovered a life-changing pill to kill cancer tumours. Chandra Llewellyn has details. The pill targets a protein previously thought untreatable and is found in most cancers. The drug has been tested on different cancers including brain, ovarian and skin and proven to be successful. News Corp reports the pill has been developed in Los Angeles at one of the largest cancer centres in the United States. Doctors say the results are promising and there have been no reported side effects in the first patient to receive the pill. An inquiry has found the ACT's chief prosecutor knowingly lied to the Supreme Court. The findings reportedly reveal Shane Drumgold engaged in serious malpractice and grossly unethical conduct during the sexual assault trial of Bruce Lerman. The report has been handed to the ACT government but won't be released publicly till the end of the month. Donald Trump is expected to appear in person tomorrow for his arraignment relating to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Alison Petrowski reports. The former US president was given the option to appear virtually but is opting to travel to Washington DC from New Jersey. Roads are being blocked off around the E. Barrett Prettyman Courthouse this morning. Republican Party members are throwing their support behind Donald Trump, including his rival for the Republican nomination, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The reality is a D.C. jury would indict a ham sandwich and convict a ham sandwich if it was a Republican ham sandwich. Special counsel Jack Smith says he will ask for a speedy trial. He wants it to be over before Americans go to the polls in November next year. And a TikTok video has gone viral of two fake tradies dressed in high vis appearing to sneak past security at the Adelaide Oval before the showdown. But not everyone's convinced they got in for free. With one person commenting, you can hear the beep of the scan ticket as they pass. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Ken Hall Plumbers, your local plumber for block drains. Trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. Former Adelaide captain Rory Sloan insists no deal has been struck for him to extend his stay at Wex Lakes beyond this season. The 33-year-old has gone on record saying he'd like to play on for another year, but has told Rowie and Timmy G news of him putting pen to paper is premature. That would be news to me, so um, oh, look, I'll just keep rolling and... Um, keep doing what I've got to do, mate. And, um, yeah, as I've expressed all, all the way along, I love what I do and I'm going to keep doing it and keep helping this team as much as I can. The sides for the Crows and Gold Coast will be released tonight, as will Port and Geelong ahead of their match on Saturday night. Meantime, the Suns are upping their bid to lure former Richmond coach Damien Hardwick to the club. With reports, CEO Mark Evans has flown to Italy, where Hardwick is on a holiday to try to convince him to join the club. Let's go to soccer now and Argentina, Italy and Brazil have all exited in the group stage of the Women's World Cup while Minnow, South Africa and Jamaica have progressed to the round of 16. Brazil sent home after a scoreless draw with Jamaica in Melbourne last night. France beat Panama 6-3 to remain top of their group. And Pat Cummins has slipped to fifth on the ICC's test bowling rankings following the Ashes series. And in some tennis, South Aussie Thanasi Kokonakis has gone down in the first round of a tournament in Washington, losing in three sets to Frenchman Hugo Umbert.
And that's the 5AA Sport. Now to the traffic. Louver House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. At Walkley Heights, Karadu Stobie, Pole Bridge Road near South Terrace. Spryans Road will be closed both directions throughout the morning, so avoid that if you can. Cuddly Creek, Rock Slide still being cleared up there. Torrent Hill Road speeds out of 50 in both directions. And we're getting busy at Tapley's Hill Road at Glenelg North. Cameras at Cliff Story, Glengowry and Doors Road at Ascot Park. Red Roosters, 295 Snack Subs, each with succulent chicken, crisp lettuce and your choice of sauce. Back to a sub. The Roosters call and get it where you can, while you can. Available all day. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Pack away the boardies and bikinis, pull out the uggies and get your brakes checked at Auto Masters. Mostly sunny and 23 today. Showers tomorrow down to 19. Cloudy on Saturday, 14. And partly cloudy Sunday, also 14. At the moment, 14. More news as it happens on 5AA. If you're like me and love your golf, then the brand new Big Swing Golf Indoor Simulators at Drummond Golf Mile End will blow you away and you can play rain, hail or shine. Now, I've had a crack at these simulators and they are brilliant. There's 84 amazing courses to play and 12 other sports to choose from. Jump online and take a look at bigswinggolf.com.au then call your mates and head down to Drummond Golf Mile End. Hello, I'm Tex Perkins. Tex Perkins, the man in black, is back. Performing the legendary songs of Johnny Cash in a brand new show. Tex brings the hard-living country legend to life. Performing the songs and stories of Johnny Cash as only Tex can. I'm stuck in falls and prison. Tex Perkins, the man in black. Friday, November 3, at Her Majesty's Theatre. Tickets at texperkins.com. I will go. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannon, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you. Nine minutes after seven, cliffhanger. Challenge Bowl just before the break. Loose is in the studio awarding people for donating in the first hour, of which there were a whole stack. We had a whole heap of prizes too. Thank you to the family cook and Chanelas for donating those. And thanks to our listeners for donating to 5 au. But the bowl emerged and said there's a challenge for Rowie and Timmy G. But we wouldn't find out till after the break when we had them on the line. Rowie, good morning. Good morning, guys. This will be good. Well, we should well, be. Ever. They typically are. Timmy G, good morning. <laughs> Yellow. All right, sorry to wake you up, guys. I know it's early for you. <laughs> wakey, wakey. Um, so <laughs> I, I've been... Lucy's just sent me some clarification on what the challenge is. The challenge okay. is this, gentlemen. You must be at Karen Rolton Oval at 8.35 a.m. this morning to uh -huh. replay the 1997 Sample Grand Final. <laughs> oh, yes. You so, must wear so your... I take a screamer over Timmy, do I? Yeah, well, you will. You must wear your footy kits. Okay. And there's, I will be there to commentate with Tom Duday on special comments. <laughs> so this, if we get 1500 bucks raised in the kitty by 8.30, you blokes in full yeah. dress kit... Replaying the grand final with a set of challenges down at Karen Rolton Oval. Uh, what are your memories of the 97 grand final, Rowie? Well, we won. We flogged Port. That was one great thing. Um, actually, actually, Timmy's first grand final was 84. He lost. His last one was uh, 97 that he lost. He, he couldn't beat Port uh, Nord in a grand final. So <laughs> I was happy that I tailed that one. I mean, anyone can beat Glenelg and Centrals and Eagles and that, but you can't beat. Uh, Norwood, say. So what, what, what exactly is the challenge? I, I, I'd love to know. Well, you'll be down at Karen Rolton. There'll be a set of cones set up and you'll be competing in a goal-kicking challenge with Timmy G. Now, Timmy, oh, right. Timmy, it's a shame that in between those those two outliers in your career, you, you really didn't enjoy any success in between <laughs> either. Oh, no. Uh, Karen Rolton, over. that's the one... Uh, right near the Royal Adelaide Hospital, isn't it? That's the one. Yeah, across the road. Beautiful, not, beautiful little oval. Not not far to go then, is there, afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, only, a, only a short limp to the casualty ward, mate. <laughs> and do you realise we, 
we wore lace up guernseys back in those days. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And? Well, you know, uh, time <laughs> isn't kind to all of us. And <laughs> what I'm thinking is have you ever seen a, an uncooked chicken wrapped in netting? Well, we're, so <laughs> <laughs> we're sort of going to have that look, I think. You might have to yeah, go to well, your local well, cobbler and get some longer laces, mate. <laughs> Timmy, you'll be right. The only jumper that I fit into is the Lycra one. I'm not going. If you're framing that, a mar- that, mar- frame a market, gents, who's who's the favourite at this point in time? Without knowing very little about what you have to do. Yeah, well, how far are we? Yeah. Are we kicking real footballs? Real footies. <laughs> yeah. Come on, I, you guys. I, I don't like me odds. I'm thinking a bit. <laughs> About fifteen to one for me, I reckon. <laughs> hang on, if it's if it's over twenty meters, I'm a oh. I, I'm I'm a dollar one to win. <laughs> if it's over five meters, I think Timmy's a hundred and one to win. <laughs> uh, you're great sports, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Right, uh, we just need fifteen hundred dollars to make this spectacle a reality. I hope. I, I mean, I've loved all the challenges. I've never cheered for one harder than this one. Can we get fifteen hundred dollars by eight thirty at five double andy drive dot com dot au to relive the ninety seven grand final? Tim's a bit stiff. I mean, how many grand finals did he win? Six, seven. Be around oh, the, had, around he, the mark. He had a little bit of success. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was I mean, part of that whole golden period. They were pretty before. solid. So of all the grand During finals the 90s, he played Port into Adelaide. to. Uh, to reenact the 97 one seems to be a fairly unfair choice. Well, a chance to right some wrongs. To it's a Nord conspiracy yet again. To that end, uh, maybe uh, Port and Nord fans would like to donate to get to see either Nord win again mm. or Port Adelaide right a wrong yeah. of 26 years ago. Exactly. Uh, hey, the- Chanelas have kick-started us with a whopping $500 oh. donation. Oh. That is massive. And these guys out there on Prospect Road... So generous. Oh, they, they gave us the $100 voucher in the first hour of the show. Now another $500 in cool, hard cash. They're right? our Christmas Day these days, you know. So we just get massive amounts of platters from them. They are sensational. Yeah, they're so no, they're really good. Really good. Uh, so we need a thousand more dollars. thousand more dollars to make the uh, the reclash of the 97 grand final. Rowie, Timmy G, down at Karen Rolt Oval after 8.30 this morning. And I'm calling with the dude. Someone better tell the dude he was in the challenge bowl as well. Oh, yeah. Due to come in a little bit later today. Very excited. Head to the Karen Rolt Oval, dude. We'll see you down there. Let's uh, take a break. We'll check traffic and come back with uh, some news around Adelaide and Australia next. Thanks, Will, and good morning. At Walkley Heights, Carl to Stoby Pole Bridge Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road will be closed both directions throughout the morning. Avoid that area if you're normally heading that way. Cuddly Creek still clearing up that rock slide there. Gorge Road near Torrance Hill Road. She's down at 50 and pretty slow, and we're starting to get busy Tapley Hill Road at Glenelg North. Cameras, Cliff Street, Glengowry, and Doors Road at Ascot Park. Harris Scarf's four-day Friends exclusive sale ends this Sunday. 50% off selected homewares in Manchester by brands like Tifau, Casa de Mani and Tontine. Ara Scarf, great brands, great prices. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. 5AA Mornings with Matthew Pantelis. Code whites in our hospitals, this means hospitals are full. Low priority cases, the wait can be as much as, ready for this, 12 hours. Imagine waiting in pain for an ambulance for 12 hours. Weekday mornings from nine. Leah Watkins, Secretary of the Ambulance Employees Association on the line. It is very serious. Patient safety is directly impacted. On 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Hi, Bronte Manuel from Toop and Toop. Now more than ever, you need an agent who's not just out for a quick sale. You need someone who can stand their ground to ensure you're maximising your home's potential. There's a good reason Toop and Toop is defying market trends and continuing to deliver premium outcomes for its clients. With a history spanning almost 40 years and a team of unrivaled experience, Toop and Toop knows what it takes to maximise your results in any selling conditions. Visit toop.com.au to find out more. Get ready to indulge in the ultimate travel experience at Phil Hoffman Travel's inaugural Luxury Day, Sunday the 6th of August from 10am till 3pm at the magnificent Ayers House. Speak to our luxury experts and operators, enjoy exclusive offers, win incredible prizes and discover the world's most exclusive and luxurious travel styles and destinations with canapes and champagne. Register your place at pht.com.au. 
Budget car and truck rental make life easy. Whether you need to move equipment, you're moving house, moving fresh produce or moving people, you'll find the widest variety of vehicles at competitive prices at Budget Car and Truck Rental. And look, the service is excellent. I've used them myself. They make everything easy from refrigerated trucks and vans to utes, four-wheel drive, sedans and wagons, buses you can drive on a car licence, even big trucks. Budget Car and Truck Rental have the vehicle to get it done with zero fuss. With seven convenient locations across the metro area, including the new one at 354 North East Road, Clemsig, you'll find a budget near you. So if you're moving out or in, taking a load to the tip or going on a big trip, do it with Budget Car and Truck Rental. Call 13 27 27. That's 13 27 27. Are you suffering from debilitating chronic migraines? Circa Clinical Research Alliance in Adelaide is looking for people who experience 15 to 26 migraines and headaches per month to participate in an experimental medical device clinical trial. The Shiratronics Migraine Therapy System is designed to reduce the number and pain intensity of migraines. There are no costs associated and travel expenses will be reimbursed. To participate or find out more, call Pain Med SA or visit painmedsa.com and click Research today. With IGA's Community Give Back Sale, you can make big savings. And help support local causes. Just look for tickets on specials like Pepsi, Solo or Schweppes 24 by 375 mil selected varieties $20.90 each. Now at your local IGA. Offer ends August 8 while stocks last. Excludes Foodland. Rosanna Mangiarelli here from 7 News. Join me and Will Goodings for Adelaide's leading news hour, 7 News, tonight at 6 o'clock. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannon, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au. Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 18 minutes after 7, need $1,000 in the Undy Drive kitty for a replay of the 97 Sample Grand Final. Port and Nord, Timmy G and Rowie in a goal-kicking competition at Karen Rolton Oval, 8.30 this morning. Looking forward to getting down there and calling the action, in inverted commas. Uh, let's get into some of the local news this morning. It's starting with a national story that I think um, is, is a serious and important one. If you're an owner of a Mazda CX-3, more than 176,000 Mazdas are being recalled over a potential fault with the rear view camera. Imagine a small SUV that lets you move like never before. <laughs> Introducing the first ever Mazda CX-3. These are among the, the most popular cars in Australia right now. Mm. 176,000 of them being recalled. So the rear view camera, there's a wiring issue that might become damaged and cause the rear view image to become distorted or flicker. So this is not a brake pads issue or a... It's not know, a life or death thing then. Well, well, but, well, I suppose well but it's probably a legal thing because if someone then reverses and hits something or someone... And you can blame it on the and car. And they can say, well, the camera... It's a very much a 2023 story, isn't it? 20 years ago, yeah, yeah. no cars are getting recalled because of it. Do you totally trust those things, though? Like I've got on the side mirrors, mm. it says if there's someone in my blind spot. I don't try. I, don't, I still look. I still look over my shoulder. Yeah, but this is the visual, physical camera. Not that, that's the that's the beeper you've got, isn't it? Yeah, no, no. It's like a little red light that flashes yeah, in the mirror. This is the camera on the dash. Well, right, okay. That, yeah. that cool. You know, you're, you're physically looking at it, which gives you a sense of security. But I'm with you on the the lane change ones. But I mean, it's not like you use the rear camera to see if there's a person behind you if you're going to reverse. Like, it's it, it's not like a. What else do you use it for? <laughs> well, for parking. Oh, to line up. For hitting cars, for mm. not hitting cars. I guess, yeah, you're, you're tracking to see if people are walking behind you. But it's fair to see yeah. if there's a little kid that is out of your eye line, stuff like that. Total pain for the owners of those cars. Ah, oh, shocking. Getting it all fixed. Uh, speaking of cars, serious accident at uh, Northfield we heard about with Saipol about um, 40 minutes ago. Peter Caldicott for 7 News is at the scene. Uh, Peter, good morning to you. Just uh, bring us up to speed with what's happened. Yes, good morning. Uh, just a horrific scene out here on Bryan's Road at Northfield. Uh, for any motorists, uh, the whole road is closed uh, in both directions as a uh, major crasher at the scene uh, trying to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, we know the uh, car involved and there was a single person in that vehicle was heading north about 4.30 this morning when he lost control. It uh, looks like he's gone right across the other side of the road and just left a trail of destruction. Uh, as as he's uh, sort of ploughed onto the footpath, he's taken out, totally taken out a stoby pole uh, right next to a bus shelter, and there's wreckage in the front fences right along the street. Uh, and then the car's stopped a few hundred metres uh, down the road. Uh, it's yeah, an extremely serious accident. We're waiting on police to give us an update on this uh, crash. Uh, but uh, just uh, a horrific scene, I guess, uh, 
the power lines are down and so people that live in those houses obviously can't leave or, or their properties uh, and we just talked to uh, a witness, an Indian uh, chap who happened to be driving home uh, at the time, he saw the crash, he stopped, he tried to help uh, so we had a quick chat with him uh, and uh, another lady who described just the horrific sounds, it woke her up at 4.30 this morning, she said it sounded like shattering glass uh, so yeah, but major crash are here. They're trying to get to the bottom of things and figure out exactly what went wrong. Jeez, what a shamble. That's awful. All right, Peter, thank you for that. Peter Caldicott from 7 News. You'll see those pictures and further details on that crash tonight uh, from 6 o'clock. I uh, wonder if we've got any listeners that have been to the new uh, new and shortly to be expanded Parafield District Outlet Centre um, out Parafield Way. This thing's been open for a month. 227,000 people have already bought, been through the centre. It's right next to Parafield Airport. So it's it open, so maybe slow, a month and two days, because it opened July 1st. They're already now talking about doubling its size Crazy, because it's it? been so popular. I, is, it, is it great? I haven't been out there. I've I'd been be, there I'd either. be fascinated to know from any listener. Can you give us a review? Is it... I, I, when I'm, in, when I'm in that neck of the woods, I tend to do all my shopping at Powell's <laughs> Liquor. Well, that's huge too. One of the best ranges of mescal and tequila in the Southern Hemisphere. Powell's is super, Maybe they need to. Well, they to. did have it until I got in there. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now they've got a shortage. <laughs> maybe they need to upsize to meet the scale of Powell's next door. Yeah. Because it's a bit intimidating. And stick half an old plane in the side of the building too. Um, it's so like at the Roulette's Tavern. The, it will be bigger than the uh, district outlet precinct at Harbour Town now once it is expanded. There are already 55 major retail stores there at um, at the Parafield District Outlet Centre, but it sounds like it's going to become absolutely mammoth. Give us a review. We haven't been out there. I'd be interested to know what people think. Uh, why is it so popular? Is it... Um, is is it the location? Is it the is it the range of offerings? Is it the discounts? I don't know. I'm not a big discount. Well, the, part of it would be the cheapness of it. Apparently, a lot of you know, like 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 at Harbour Town, you can get yeah. stuff heavily discounted. But uh, some people just go for a day's fun. You know, go there, have a coffee, meet friends. Mm. A lot of kids just love doing that sort of teenage Hanging kids. out at malls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 822 Tell us. Give us a review if you could. It's amazing what a success story it's been in this, especially to, in this retail environment. You look at every ABS data set on retail sales at the moment and business confidence, and it's in, it's, it's in the, the toilet. Mm. So in, against that backdrop to be saying, we're open a month and we're going to double in size, that's an unbelievable local story. Uh, let's talk sport. Uh, $17 schnitty Monday to Wednesday at the Albion Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and Lighthouse Wharf. You just know it's a Barrow Hotel. Last night on the sports show, Rowie and Timmy G spoke to AFL legend Lee Matthews regarding the sanctions that the Port Adelaide Football Club might expect. The figure to me, like the make a state penalty for me without going over the top, might be 50 grand. That's a lot of money, but no one person's playing. The, the, the Port Adelaide Football Club are paying. And I, I don't think you go back to individuals. No, I, I think you say, no, the club they didn't apply it. And yeah, there's individuals involved who, who didn't apply it uh, correctly. But no, that, that was the figure that stuck in okay. my mind. Yep. And cause it's got yep. to be a make a statement. One. I don't say it's fair. I'm just saying it. That seems like the make a statement amount. And again, no individuals paying it. The port club are paying it. Because mm. I'm a bit with you with that, because we're getting a lot of texts mm. saying, oh, the club doctor, the club doctor. The club doctor mm. ultimately made the decision, and the buck maybe yeah. stops with him because that scat five is him. But there yeah. was a coach that was sitting there. There was a physio that was sitting there. There were players that were sitting there. There were four coaches upstairs sitting there. Chris Davies was sitting there. There's a lot of people that could have. That's why I'm thinking it needs to be a fine, because mm. there's a lot of people that could have said, no, what are you doing? And they didn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. I don't know. I think it's a, a clear, like, for me yeah. anyway, it's a, a, you penalise the club. You don't try and penalise an individual. In this kind of situation, it's not like, not like an on-field reportable offence. Yeah, there's been an apology. I think it's been looked at and said, yeah, it's been badly handled. But I think the fact that there was two blokes being looked at at the same time is yeah, probably one of the reasons it may have gone a little bit astray. That's fair analysis, I think. Which is what Koshy said yesterday. Matthews, yeah. There was confusion because was there, was, there was two people that... Mm. Got hit at the same time. Yeah, exactly. I'm just fascinated from the AFL's perspective on this. 50 grand for Port, though. Crikey. I mean, what's that going to come out of? Well, this is where monetary fines are. Okay, so there's already a soft cap on um, on, on the coach's box that hasn't been gone up to what it was pre-COVID yet. So 50 grand, is that a trainer's job? Probably. 
Is that someone like who's out there running drinks jobs? Or somebody like that? Is that one of the masseuses' jobs? Like, wh wh who's that punishing? Yeah, I know. I just think that's just... I think that monetary fines are this... I'd actually argue that Port have suffered enough already in terms of the scrutiny that they've had over it. But it's just... It's been a massive story. And I think it's such a big story that if the AFL's desire with this is to alter the behaviour of all clubs and to take this more seriously... I think it's already going to achieve that anyway. The problem is they get pre-sentence. So the AFL fined him $20,000 previously for a Hamish Hartley concussion incident that basically amounted to a paperwork stuff up. That was mm. twenty grand. Yeah, right. So what do you so, do for this? Oh, and well, and you got well, to think... If you look at the way the, the, the converse of the tribunal works, I don't think consistency has ever troubled the AFL <laughs> That's too true. much. The other thing is the AFL... And they're in a, we're in an environment now where you twizzle someone's moustache and it's considered head-eye contact and you're out for a week. Like they are so sensitive to Chinese the perception, bird. exactly, to or the perception cripple. of anything that affects the head. So, well, how do Sorry, they how do they look on, on this? That's a bit juvenile, wasn't it? You love a nipple cripple. <laughs> uh, more on the <laughs> mate. If someone donates five hundred dollars, we'll jump over the mixing desk and give you one. No on thanks. Air. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do have our limits, and we do yeah, have an HR department. <laughs> You know, and you remember what they said last time. You heard it here first, folks. Hashtag no fine for port. That's my view. I don't think they should fine them. I think they should use this as... A, we're going to draw a line under this, start again. So you think no punishment whatsoever? Well, no... Well, I'd have to apologise. I think, a, I think monetary they, fines are stupid, but I think you need the sanction. Yeah, well, what's the sanction? Anyway, anyway. See what, Se see what the listeners think. Seventy dollars schnitty Monday to Wednesday at the Albion Birkin and Tavern Excelsior Lighthouse Wharf. You just know it's a Barrow Hotel. Lucy's in the studio. Morning, Luce. Good morning. We are halfway to the fifteen hundred dollars. So you have an hour. Oh. Though. We're halfway now. Anyone who donates from seven AM, let's say, until eight thirty to get us to that magical fifteen hundred dollar. I've got five of these fun little five double A gift bags, which also include a bunch of movie tickets to go and see Wallace. Now Barbie The five double A Bubinetta. Sure. Now, the Barbie movie has just reached over $800 million mm. for the second weekend in box office. So if you haven't seen Barbie or Oppenheimer yet, we've got some movie tickets on us to give to you to go get along to the movies with a 5AA mug and a few little goodies. So anyone who donates between now and 8.30, five of you wow. will get some movie tickets. You don't have a, All thanks like, to Wallace. a voucher for a babysitter in that bag, do you, Luce? I'd love to go see Oppenheimer. <laughs> I'll babysit. Oh, okay. Done. You Here we go. Right. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what are your rates like? We'll negotiate, off, we'll negotiate offline. I love this from Ben Jordan, who's just don our resident stats man, who's just donated $100 to the 5 AA Undy Drive. He says $10 for every sample grand final between Rowie and Timmy G, noting it was 9-1 to Timmy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty good record. All right, we're going to take a break. 5 AA News is coming up. Matt Abraham next. This is Adelaide's 5 AA. Mostly sunny in 23 with the 7.30 News. I'm Kendall Brentig. Planning a function? Speak to the Adelaide Convention Centre team to elevate your vision for your next event. There's been a serious crash at Northfield. A car travelling north on Bryan's Roads left the road and collided with a Stobie pole. Peter Caldercott from 7 News is there and says the road's closed in both directions. Major crash at the scene uh, trying to figure out exactly what happened. There was a single person in that vehicle was heading north about 4.30 this morning when he lost control. It uh, looks like he's gone right across the other side of the road and just left a trail of destruction as he's uh, sort of ploughed onto the footpath. He's taken out, totally taken out a stobie pole. And a drunken drug driver has lost her licence after three separate crashes yesterday afternoon. It's alleged she reversed into a parked van at Brighton before rear-ending another car at O'Halloran Hill. Police later found her car in the middle of Quinvale Road at Hallett Cove after it hit a kerb smashing off its front tyre. The 28-year-old woman from Salisbury East allegedly blew 2.215 and tested positive to meth. She's been reported for multiple offences and will face court at a later date. 
New figures show a record number of Australians are taking on a second job. Data from the Bureau of Statistics shows there are 950,000 people holding down at least two jobs. Marketing professor Gary Mortimer says it's a consequence of low unemployment. There's groups of consumers that are doing OK, but they actually take this opportunity to get a bit ahead of the game. Uh, obviously, with very, very low uh, unemployment rate, uh, there's plenty of jobs that they're taking, so I think they're getting ahead. I think there's also a small group in there that are actually enjoying the flexibility of working a couple of different jobs, maybe doing uh, uh, some driving for Uber and maybe working in a hotel. The passage of the federal government's safety net legislation has been broadly welcomed by welfare groups. Payments include rent assistance and pensions and will increase from mid-September, while JobSeeker will rise by $56 to almost $750 a fortnight. US scientists have developed a breakthrough drug aimed at curing cancer. It kills all solid cancer tumours while leaving other cells unharmed. The drug was tested on 70 different cancer cells including breast, prostate and lung cancer. More than a million young people are expected to attend a gathering in Portugal with the Pope. More from Karianne Greenbank. More than a million young people from over 200 countries are set to gather over the next five days for World Youth Day, many of them aged between 16 and 35. In his opening address, Pope Francis said he hopes to inspire the next generation of Catholics with these events and called on young people to help tackle current issues, including climate change and current conflicts. He's personally tackling the ongoing sexual abuse scandal in the Portuguese Catholic Church, with a recent report finding almost 5,000 boys and girls have been abused in the church since the 1950s. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Ken Hall Plumbers, your local plumber for block drains. Trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. And we're just waiting on Tom Wren. And welcome, Tom Rand. Oh, goodness, Kendall, they've got to put the uh, radio on in the background. That's a bit of an issue for us. Let's start with a little bit of football news. And Damien Hardwick is reportedly a step closer to signing on with Gold Coast on a monster five-year deal. It comes after he has been reportedly lured by Gold Coast Chief Executive uh, Mark Evans on a five-year deal. Let's stick with football, though. And Brownlow medal favourite Nick Dacos has re-signed with Collingwood on a long-term deal. The 20-year-old and his 24-year-old brother Josh have committed to the club for six more years. Nick Dacos says he's looking forward to continuing playing under coach Craig McRae. absolutely love playing under fly. One of the things that I love most is his humility. I'm so humble. And then another thing I love is how he sort of always preaches the positive. Doesn't matter how the game's going, he never really shows us negatives. He'll always show us us at our best, and I think we respond really well to that. So he knows the playing group and knows how to get the best out of us. Well, Jeremy Cameron has been cleared of any wrongdoing after being attacked at a Geelong pub. The football club has reviewed the CCTV footage and is comfortable with Cameron's version of events. Let's go to soccer at the Women's World Cup. Jamaica's through to the knockout stages, eliminating Brazil from the competition with a scoreless draw in Melbourne. Group F leaders France have also locked in their spot in the round of 16 after beating Panama 6-3. Sweden stunned Argentina 2-0, while South Africa got over Italy 3-2. And Kendall, it's going to take a while to live that one down. That is the 5AA Sport. Oh, better late than never, Tommy. Now checking 5AA traffic. Luther House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. G'day there, got a nasty crash to look out for Walkley Heights this morning. Cars going to go to Stobie Pole there, Brian's Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road is going to be closed throughout the morning. Avoid that if you can today. Cuddly Creek, they're still clearing up that rock slide. Gorge Road near Torrance Hill Road, speeds at 50. Getting busy, Marion Road at the Anzac Highway, intersection with the camera at Montague Road at Cavern. Can't decide between flame grilled chicken or a burger? Have both with the new Best of Bondi box, only $16.95. Audio is now at a Porto. Adelaide's most accurate traffic. On 5AA. Pack away the bikinis and boardies, pull out the woolies and get your brakes checked at Automasters. Mostly sunny and 23 today, showers tomorrow 19, cloudy on Saturday 14 and partly cloudy for Sunday also 14. At the moment 15. More news as it happens on 5AA. Don't just send it, ace it. It's not just your deliveries that AC Couriers look after. They're also proud supporters of the community. Chris, tell us more. That's right, Rowie. At AC Couriers, we're proud supporters of over 16 sporting clubs. We also work with and support the Breakthrough Mental Health Research Foundation to strive for a happy and positive workplace. By supporting us, you're also supporting the community. Don't just 
CMAX is proudly South Australian, leading advancements in global healthcare for 30 years with the help of thousands of individuals just like you. If you're aged 18 or older, you may be eligible to participate in CMAX trials, which investigate potential treatments for a range of conditions, such as lung or kidney diseases. You'll be paid for your time upon your successful participation. Check your eligibility for CMAX trials today at cmax.com.au. South Australia wouldn't be South Australia without its businesses big and small. And when it comes to business broking, there's a big name you can't miss, Ray White Business Sales. What makes Ray White the big name in business broking? Well, it's the people. People like MBA, lecturer and multi-award winning SA Business Broker of the Year, Brett Buckley. Great bloke, we've met Brett, he's a legend, and his team of business professionals. They take a deep dive into your business, they find value and potential, and they know what they're looking for because they know businesses. Now, they're not real estate salespeople trying to sell businesses, they're business people selling businesses. Brett and his team, they can take your business apart and find you more money, and we're not talking small change. So if you want to know what your business is worth, touch base with Brett and his team, search Ray White Business Sales SA. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannon, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au. Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Gooding. 22 to 8. We're getting ever closer to that $1,500 mark raised for Catherine House and the Hutt Street Centre. 5AAndydrive.com.au to replay the 97 Sample Grand Final between Nord and Port at Karen Rolton Oval at 8.30 this morning. Rowie and Timmy G, goal-kicking challenge. I'll be down there with the dude commentating. Big donations coming in as well. I mentioned Ben Jordan a moment ago. Melissa and Asher have put in $100. Uh, well, on your Melissa Melissa and on your Asher. Melissa and Asher. Uh, so my eight-year-old daughter. Uh, Love, loves listening to 5AA. Great work raising money for these charities. Cheers, Adelaide guys. Youth Station. Well, that, well, that'll help the demos. Thank you, <laughs> Melissa and Asher. Gabby uh, says uh, she's put in $20. And how about this? M21 Studios, who are a real estate photography company. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't use any other. No. If you wanted to sell your house. If I was going to sell my house, I'd ring M21 Real Estate Photography straight I'll tell you how not say, to sell your house. Use someone who isn't M21. Let's say... We're not taking photos of that. Can you tidy it up first? <laughs> okay, okay. They have put in $500 to the oh. Andy Drive. A big thank you to the great people at M21 Studios Real Estate Photography. If you'd like to donate, 5AAandyDrive.com.au is the place to go. I'm a 10, I'm a 10, every time. Matthew Abraham on 5AA Breakfast. Your local Mitre 10, friendly service, expert advice, quality brands at great prices. That's mighty helpful Mitre 10. Matthew Abraham, good morning. Good morning, Will. Good morning, David. I'm, I'm very relieved to be in the studio, I, I can say. After, it's good, good to have you here, mate. Thank you. I've, I had an anxiety dream last night, a radio anxiety dream. You'd oh. both be familiar with those. Yes. Uh, because I've uh, begun my uh, in daily column writing about breakfast radio as a tenuous link into the actual topic, as <laughs> long suffering readers would know. <laughs> uh, Love a good tenuous link. <laughs> when I get into the actual point about 350 words in. Um, and so I've, I've written about breakfast radio, how it was the best and the worst job I've ever done. And. Um, and then I had this anxiety dream where I was meant to be in the studio here and Lucy was holding the fort and I, I'd slept in and oh no. there was 15 minutes to go before nine o'clock and I couldn't, I kept finding the wrong phone, which, which, because I didn't have the number to ring, the, you know, and it was, I was so <laughs> glad you, when you, I woke Matt, up. For you, Matt, that's a dream. For me, it <laughs> sounds exactly like it's something a, I've actually called, done. <laughs> for David, it's a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Harvest Rock concert. <laughs> <laughs> I saw they put out there. Yeah, there, mate, there. You better watch out. Beck's playing on yeah. the Sunday night, and I'm pretty keen on getting along to that one. <laughs> God, I, had a, I had a real waking anxiety when I saw the uh, <laughs> the list of artists that oh, were playing. Surely lightning can't strike twice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't want to jinx anyone, anyway, but though. best mm. and worst job. Very true. Yeah, it, it, it is. When oh, you got you go. to your point, what was the point? I, I like your meandering stuff. I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> not you know meandering, it's... No, 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 having, it's... having just watched all five tests. You're, you're like a batsman who's getting his eye in, when, oh, um, unlike, unlike uh, um, David Johnny Warner. Bear stuff. Oh, sorry. No, no, well, <laughs> but you, you, you take your crease and you're outside your crease doing a bit of gardening with your bat. That's mm. what I like in the start of your oh, columns. Too. It's good. And then you start opening the shoulders. <laughs> I'm writing about um, 
Peter Malinowskis' future? Like, is, is there life after Malinowskis, um, effectively? I don't want to give too much away. Oh, okay. it's, it's, you have to wait till Friday. Life after Malinowskis yes. for the Labor Party locally? Yes, and, 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 and federally, obviously. What's yeah. his life after state politics? Is it just a well, quiet, a quiet <laughs> life in Croydon? Or? I don't think so. I'm yeah. going to be a converted garage in Canberra. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, there's too many people who aren't him who rate him too highly for that not to become an issue for him at no, some point. I think so. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Just, um, you know. I, I don't I, care. I enjoyed your column about The Voice yeah. that, that is released and therefore something we can talk about. Um, <laughs> doesn't really Talk matter. about the three options that are yes. essentially available to the Yes campaign right now because you, you likened it to an election campaign that was... A yep. dud. A dud. It was going a, off the rails. Yeah. And we've all watched um, dud election campaigns sort of unfolding. And, and the most recent example was the Stephen Marshall uh, campaign, where uh, David Spears has said, uh, well, to have a bad campaign, you have to have a campaign. And, you know, that was a damning comment, wasn't it? it? It was. And he likened himself to being a kid strapped in the car. And, you know, Dad's nodded off or something like that. And you <laughs> can't down a hill. talk about anxiety dreams. <laughs> I do make the point that I sometimes wonder if David Spears realises he's actually saying... You know how sometimes you say... Th you, you can't remember whether you said something or you thought it. Mm. <laughs> or, you know, you... you you know, because it is, isn't a bad thing to have a few unexpressed thoughts if you're a politician. <laughs> but he doesn't seem to. There's no sort of off switch on that. You know, so, so, they're, they're the, so anyway, that was... And so we've had front seats at bad campaigns and, and good campaigns, obviously. Um, and I'm watching the, the, the voice campaign. And, you know, it's a, it's, to me, at this stage, it's a classic dud campaign, the, the yes campaign. Um, mm. it's, and the options are not palatable for that. You either have to somehow reset um, the agenda, and I, I don't know how they'll do that. Um, you uh, plough on, which is, it looks like what Linda Burney, the, the relevant minister carrying this, and Anthony Albanese are going to do. They're just going to, to plough on. Or the nuclear option is that you just, you just pull the pin completely. And I, I, can't, I can't see that happening. I think that, so, so that's the bind that the Yes campaign is in, and we're seeing this week increasingly now that the debate shifting to whether there should be whether the a voice is a precursor to a, a, a macarada, a, a truth, a truth telling, mm. and then a and then a treaty. And then a treaty. Um, he wasn't convincing when he was being interviewed about that, the prime minister. No, and and he almost seems to be trying to sell the voice as being so almost invisibly small in scope and effect that people go, well, why are we even doing yeah. this then? And, and when you've got the recommendation in the Uluru Statement, as you clearly spelled out there, right, is, yeah, first the voice, then truth-telling, then treaty. Well, that's what it says. You have to engage on the question about, well, okay, if we do do the voice, Prime Minister, do, do these other two things happen? And him sort of go, no, no, we're not talking about that. It's like, well, it's there in black and white. Mm -hmm. They're fair questions. You know, and are you going to run a small target strategy or are you really going to take ownership of this? Um, be, because I actually find the treaty a lot easier to sell than the voice. Because the, the voice is complicated. I know they say it's not, but it mm. is complicated. Mm. Um, and and it, 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 the option, you know, the Jeff Kennett option, which is widely derided by the Yes camp, is that you have constitutional recognition of um, uh, First Nations people, Aboriginal people, in our constitution. That should be there. It's, it's in our, it was part of the process here. It's in our constitution, South, South Australian constitution. You should have that there, but you hive off the voice. The voice becomes a legislated mechanism mm. um, in, in parliament. Mm. And it would romp home. I think if you had Indigenous recognition oh, in the constitution, it would be sort of all over Red Rover. Yeah. Um, like our system here now that we're going to have. Yeah. Mm. It, 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 which we've, has been shelved, of we've, course. We've put it off because it's too successful. <laughs> it's, 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 it's apparently well, reality, was, isn't it? Well, it was going to be. It, it was going to be the template for the rest of Australia. See how well it's working in South Australia, and you know it's been shelved because <laughs> Peter Malinowskis, you know, can read the tea leaves. He, he knows where the federal. I, I would think he knows where the federal vote's headed. But isn't it also he's doing a favour to the, the the Yes campaign asked for it to be put off. Well, he's doing mm. him a favour because he was he was putting forward a superior and more palatable template. Mm. That was the problem. It was going to show to Australia what it could what could be what you, achieved. What you can achieve. Well, unfortunately, what they showed was an alternative model that could be achieved. Yeah. Because it's a legislated model, not a not one requiring right. change. So maybe the scenario is voice fails at the referendum, uh, then next year SA Voice starts working, 
And the people who are still advocating for The Voice in 18 months' time will say, OK, we should revisit this issue along the line South Australia has because look at their voice. The world hasn't caved in. It's up and running. Yeah. It's working quite well. Yeah. And a future government, if the voters decide, has every right to reject it through legislation and say we're not using this silly voice thing anymore because it's become a total obstacle to good government. And the voters, if that's what they think, they're allowed to vote that way. Mm. Seems but, to be an option. Uh, so it's a more palatable option. Um, as I said, I think you know a, a, a treaty would probably get up in a referendum if you needed, if you even need a referendum, even if you need to change the constitution for that, I don't think you would for um, a, a treaty um, because it seems to me to be something people can get their head around. You know, it's, it's quite a... To your point though, Matt, about the elbow cell job, I don't think there can be a successful elbow cell job and I've got the, 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 the constant refrain of our listeners ringing in my ears. I reckon every time the Prime Minister opens his mouth and says even says the word voice, even not in the context of the voice. Mm. If he says, I was watching the voice on yeah, television was, last night. He was thinking about John Farnham. Yeah, yeah, mm. you're the voice. If he sang mm. a line from that, people would go, can you just shut up? Because I just got another letter from AGL. It, it, it makes it sound like mm. he's totally disengaged from bread and butter issues. And I, that's why I think he can't effectively be the spear carrier for it because it makes it sound like he's lost interest in governing for the average punter. Yeah, and um, it... That, that's the bind in which he finds himself and his government's almost in that. It's very hard to spruik your agenda on how you're helping people. Um, I don't know if many people could understand how they're being helped, but obviously vulnerable people are, are being helped. There has, money has gone to that in the last federal budget as it's gone to the state budget, but um, it's, hard to, it's hard to sell your credentials on that. And I, I, I think, you know, we talk about campaign resets, um, obviously, the no campaigns are a lot easier to process. You know, it, 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 you know, mm. if you don't know, say no. That, I mean, that's their slogan. It's very powerful slogan. It's in a way, you, it's cheap and nasty. You know, that's easy. It's it's an easy thing to knock something. Um, it is hard to sell the voice. Well, they're, but they're making it hard. And one of the things, you know, they say, oh, I've, I've been travelling around talking to people. You know, and you look at the photos of it, and you are preaching to the converted. And oh, totally. You, mm. That that might make you feel good, and that things are going yeah. well. But it's you know, I've if you walk around the you know inner southern suburbs of Adelaide and probably the inner north as well, and certainly Thebin and Torrensville, I reckon every twentieth house has got a yes thing out the front. How are they going down Hackham Way? Those posters. But I think this is the inherent po north. problem with politics these days. There's no appetite to engage with people who don't instantly yeah. agree with you. Exactly. Exactly. It's the Twitter phenomenon. And here's what you get. This yeah. is what you end up with. Is it impossible to win? Uh, referendum campaign because you've you, from the outset went well if you don't agree with us there's something wrong with you yeah mm. we saw the, the, the because you, of, they only hang out with people who think that eight dollars a loaf is a reasonable price to pay yeah. for organic sourdough bread exactly and at Port Wollonga Bakery but um, <laughs> the, that's great that bakery. I read this uh, there was this sort of a, a small study done by these two academics I think Canberra academics and they were saying that uh, one, the, the uh, problem with the people who are planning to vote no is they just don't understand you know, they're ill-informed that if, if you're informed, you, you support a yes force. And I think it's so patronising oh, because totally. it is possible to have to be really well informed about the voice and decide to vote no. Mm. But that is a, mm. that, that's a valid position. But no, the starting point is you just don't understand yeah. um, the complexities or the benefits of this. And I, I did also see people applauding a, a, a meme that um, oh, this is a real winner saying to people that, you're not a racist if you vote no, but all the racists are voting no. Mm. Well, Jack Thompson's comment as well, where he said, if, if the voice goes down, it will be a victory for racism. And people were retweeting that like it's a great quote. And I'm thinking, you bunch of idiots. Like, this, what it is, it's, it's, it's Hillary Clinton calling Trump voters deplorables before the election and then losing in a landslide. Mm. Yeah, you don't it's do like that. Insulting people is not a way to win hearts and minds. And, I, you know, I don't think, I don't think, I think Anthony Albanese is carrying this debate in a polite way, um, you know, I, mm. I, he, is in a, he is, as we pointed out, in a bind. I don't think he's being insulting. I don't think he's being disrespectful. Um, and, and I think probably the same with Linda Burney. But um, the, I suppose, the rank and file. Yeah, they're um, the problem. Yeah. You know, are a, are a problem. And, yeah, I don't know where they go with that one. All right, let's write some spin. Out of ten, out of ten, every time. Now, speaking of uh, an inability to respect or understand your opponent's argument, 
This is the uh, this is our learned senate, mm. and I'll put this in the context of um, my brothers and I um, were watching telly once, black and white telly, watching a cowboy show on telly, you know, and one of the cowboys said to the other, "Shut up!" And my dad turned the telly off, like you can't say that's disgraceful language. <laughs> well, oh, dad, it's only just you know. <laughs> <laughs> this was before you know shut the whatever up mm. this is um this, so this is green senator nick mckim who's fired up in the senate because matt canavan a climate um, denier you could call it is uh, sort of uh, heckling mate you can shut your mouth uh, senator you can senator, shut your senator mouth McKim. people senator are McKim. dying senator McKim because resume of you your seat. sociopaths like you senator mckim i'm not going to cop Interjections from sociopaths like Senator Canavan. Senator I will McKim, not resume your seat. Out. And what they've got to answer for is death, disease, displacement, starvation, people dying of thirst, arable farming lands turning into desert, and most likely billions of people dead by the end of this century, Order, and Canada. the collapse of the ecosystems that actually support all human life on this planet. That's what people like Senator Canavan have got to answer for. Crikey. Well, tell us what you really think. I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's spin, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to give him a four out of ten. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Good on you, Matt. Right, have you in? Yeah, let's check Thanks traffic. John Blake coming up. Thanks, Will. Nasty crash to look out for this morning at Walkley Heights. Cars got into a stoby pole here, Bridge Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road is closed currently both directions and will be throughout the whole morning. Avoid that area if you're normally heading that way. Still clearing up that rock slide at Cudley Creek Gorge Road near Torrance Hill Road. She's pretty slow there. Quite busy at the moment. Main North Road at Enfield with a camera Barrett's Road at Clapper. The all-new Hyundai Kona is here. Bigger and bolder. Book a test drive at your local Hyundai dealer to experience dynamic styling, cutting-edge tech. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. It's time to raise the bar. If you're organising an event, anything from a small meeting to a grand gala, you'll know there are many things to consider. So trust the experts at Adelaide Convention Centre to help you elevate your vision. With the support from our team at every stage, you'll be amazed at what can happen in turning each aspect into an unforgettable experience for both you and your guests. Contact our team and discover the magic to elevate your vision at Adelaide Convention Centre. Introducing the 2023 World Performance Car of the Year, the Kia EV6 GT. 430 kilowatts of power and 740 newton meters of torque. With its unique Australian tuned GT suspension and steering, the Kia EV6 exceeds all expectations. The Kia EV6 GT, the most powerful Kia ever built. Kia, movement that inspires. Show your RAA card at Snooze and save up to 40% off RRP, including selected mattresses and bed frames. Hurry, the Snooze Auto Club member event ends Sunday. Exclusion season C supply. Amazing what a little snooze can do. Now, here we go. Good announcement here. Rundle Blinds, they're celebrating 70 years in business. And during August, for every new order, over $3,000, Rundle Blinds, kids they live to give, they're going to donate 100 bucks to the Hutt Street Centre in support of five double A's undie drive. It could be money that, as we speak, is going towards uh, the replay of the Sample 97 Grand Final at Karen Rotten Oval after 8.30 <laughs> this morning. You don't win the 2022 National Small Business of the Decade Award for being good at what you do. You win it for being exceptional. Visit the state-of-the-art Rundle Blinds showroom on Goodwood Road and experience award-winning service along with an incredible range of internal and external blinds and shutters, including an extensive range of curtains. Now, if you're building or you want to update your window furnishings, you'll love Rundle Blinds and Curtains. Drop into their magnificent showroom or call or visit at their website, rundleblinds.com.au. And a big thank you to Ian, Sam and the team at Rundle Blinds who kindly donated $500 to our Andy drive. Growing up with Mum was an adventure. She was so strong and independent. Then we noticed she was struggling to manage in her large family home but wasn't quite ready for aged care. Glen Woodley Estate was perfect. Mum has the support she needs and the independence she loves. Her meals, cleaning and linen are taken care of and she has friends to socialise with in the clubhouse. <laughs> Glen Woodley Estate service departments in Myrtle Bank are selling now. Visit southerncrosscare.com.au 
Five AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to Five AA on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannon, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au Breakfast on 5AA. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Four to wait, I've got good news and better news for you. Coming up immediately after 8 o'clock, we will be playing 5AA's David Penberthy's Channel 7 News Reading audition <laughs> video that he turned up in the studio to do at the desk with the auto cue, the full team there. This is the opposite of a sizzle reel. It's coming There's up no after sizzle in this one. the 8 o'clock news. So stick around for that. That was part of his challenge for the 5 Double Andy drive. The other you, challenge if you like hearing grown men become completely tongue-tied, you're going to love this. The 5 Double Andy drive that we're raising money for right now, $100 more dollars is all that's required. That's even better news to get the 97 grand final replay happening at the Karen, at Karen Rolton Oval from 8.30 this morning. So $100 more dollars. Make it you. Make it your donation. Make it a reality. 5 Double drive.com.au. Time for John. Blake, thanks to Aussie Fast Transport Solutions, Interstate Freight Distribution Warehousing, and local Adelaide couriers. Call Aussie Fast 13 13 64. Yes, Steph. Good morning, Premier. Tom Goodson Tonus is here to see you. Okay, send him in, Steph. Will do. You can go in, Minister. Thank you, Stephanie. Come in, Tom. Hello, Pemia Peter. You know, Tom, what's up? Boy, oh boy, the ramping isn't getting any better. <laughs> oh, do you have to say that every time you come in? Well, I'm just saying what all those broadcasters are going to say to you if you do an interview about a ramping. Well, you know, an uncomfortable interview. Well, I'm not going to. An gonna... awkward on air encounter. <laughs> Listen, I. Train wreck conversation with the Premier. Tom. <laughs> Savaging I... from a shock jock. That's not what we. A shambolic butchering of Peter Malinowska's. Uh, stop being spectacular so. Spectacular derailment. Of an election promise. Oh, come on, that's not. A Mally meltdown. <laughs> Goodbye, Tom. <laughs> Catastrophic collision of personalities. You've been on Chat GTP again, haven't you? Oh, oh well, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> How about go and do some work? So, if we keep adding more ambos, it's just going to make ramping worse, isn't it? Well, it, it, it's a process. Because we didn't really promise more ambos, we promised less ramping. Well, both, I think... Uh, uh, Premier Peter Malinowskos joins us in the studio. What do you say to people who accuse you of a broken promise? Oh, stop or me. a re-evaluation of the situation. I'm not doing this. A I'm... deviation from the initial commitment. Get out. Taking a different course of action. Goodbye. A revised understanding. <laughs> Steph, call security. A modification of the arrangement. How about we modify the arrangement of your portfolios? And I'm spent. <laughs> <laughs> Massive next half hour on 5 to Blow Breakfast coming up. David's Channel 7 audition tape. And then after 8.30, if we get $100 more dollars in the kitty for the 5 to Andy drive, Rowie and Timmy G in full kit trying to maybe full, right the, the full, wrongs the full, of the 97 sample grand final. The full kit part of it is slightly alarming, isn't it? It is. Um, from Karen Wright and Oval, there'll be a goal-kicking competition. I'll be commentating along with the dude, Tom Duday, after 8.30. Just need $100 more. Dollars. 5 to Blow News coming up. David. TV star next. Are you suffering from debilitating chronic migraines? Circa Clinical Research Alliance in Adelaide is looking for people who experience 15 to 26 migraines and headaches per month to participate in an experimental medical device clinical trial. The Shiratronics Migraine Therapy System is designed to reduce the number and pain intensity of migraines. There are no costs associated and travel expenses will be reimbursed. To participate or find out more, call Pain Med SA or visit painmedsa.com and click research today. Shane here from Adelaide Exposed Concrete. It was really simple. We were introduced to a uh, Ryan. Uh, he came out and seen us at, at our premises, which was great. So we didn't have to come in. He came out and seen us. Friendly, understanding what we were looking for. Wasn't pushy. Wasn't like one of these salesmen that comes in and just wants you to sign on the dollar line. Gave us the opportunity to talk about what we wanted. And from there, the process was quite simple. Came in, saw the rest of the people that work at 5AA, sorted out some great radio ads. And from there, the, it's just grown into what it is today. The process is really simple. It's not daunting, it's not hard. The people that work here make it very simple and very easy to understand for anybody. To get your message out there and grow your business, visit 5AA.com.au and hit the Advertise With Us link. Online, on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM, Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Mostly sunny and 
9.23 with the 8 o'clock news. I'm Kendall Brantick. Planning a function? Speak to the Adelaide Convention Centre team to elevate your vision for your next event. Brian's Road at Northfield is closed in both directions after a shocking crash this morning. Peter Caldercott from 7 News is there. He's totally taken out a stobie pole right next to a bus shelter and there's wreckage in the front fences right along the street. Uh, and then the cars stopped a few hundred metres down the road. So just uh, a horrific scene. Police are yet to give an update on the condition of the driver. The peak body for aged care providers is suggesting locking away some superannuation to help fund the sector. A range of options are being examined by the federal government to help make the care industry more sustainable. Labor's also considering a new tax or requiring wealthier people to pitch in more of their own money. While the Greens say an increase to a raft of benefits is welcome, but some payments still don't go far enough. Job seeker will lift by $56 a fortnight from mid-September. Rent assistance will rise, as will pensions and the single parent payment. But Green Social Services spokeswoman Janet Rice says the boost should really be closer to what was provided during COVID. More people were in a position to be able to enter the workforce. People reported they were able to you know, get their car fixed. They were able to yeah. afford to pay for the public transport yeah, fares to get off to job interviews. Mm -hmm. They could pay for their medications that enabled them to really help get their life under control and get themselves back into work. An inquiry into the handling of the Bruce Lerman trials accusing the chief prosecutor of lying to the ACT Supreme Court. More from Sophie Opcroft. The Australian newspaper is reporting that the head of the inquiry into the handling of the Bruce Lerman rape trial has found that Mr Drumgold lost his objectivity during the prosecution of Mr Lerman over rape allegations and that Mr Drumgold knowingly lied to the Chief Justice during the trial. They say it also finds that all of the allegations made by Mr Drumgold with which sparked the public inquiry, were baseless. The 600-page document is due to be released publicly at the end of the month. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump say they're confident he will be found innocent. A grand jury in the US has voted to indict the former president on four counts. The charges include conspiracy to defraud the US over alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 election result. Mr Trump's defence attorney, John Loro, maintains he's done nothing wrong. We're entitled to understand what the charges are. We're entitled to do our own investigation. The special counsel or the Justice Department, the Biden Justice Department, has had three years to investigate this. Uh, to take President Trump to trial in 90 days, of course, is absurd. A gunman who murdered 11 people five years ago at a synagogue in Pittsburgh has been sentenced to death. More from the BBC's Joe Inwood. It was the worst anti-Semitic attack in American history. Three congregations sharing the same synagogue, targeted by the 50-year-old truck driver, Robert Bowers. He attacked the Pittsburgh Tree of Life synagogue on October 2018. Eleven people died. His oldest victim was 97. Bowers was shot multiple times by the police, but survived his injuries to face justice. Now that process has taken place. A jury of 12 of his peers voted unanimously for him to receive the death penalty. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Ken Hall Plumbers, your local plumber for block drains, trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. Here is Tom Wren. Thank you, Kendall. The chances of former Richmond coach Damien Hardwick landing at Gold Coast are reportedly a step closer. Suns chief executive Mark Evans has flown to Italy to speak with Hardwick, offering him a five-year deal as their next coach. It is selection night for the Crows and Port Adelaide, with both sides having to make some decisions ahead of their round 21 matches. The Crows take on Gold Coast on Saturday and will have to replace Luke Pedler with the club deciding to give him a rest. James Borlase will make his debut with Jordan Butts out injured. And Port has to make at least two changes with Aaliyah Aaliyah and Lockie Jones, both set to miss the match against Geelong on Saturday night because of concussion. Well, arguably the goal of the tournament at last night's FIFA Women's World Cup with Panama's Marta Cox free kick from about 40 yards, an absolute screamer. And it's Cox. Oh, oh what a start! 69 seconds. And they have come from the bench and everywhere to celebrate an historic moment for Panama. 
Audio there thanks to Optus. Panama ended up losing the match to France 6-3, meaning the French topped the group, while Jamaica stunned Brazil with a nil-all draw, meaning they also progressed in second spot. And in Group G, Sweden beat Argentina 2-0, while South Africa stunned Italy 3-2, meaning both Italy and Argentina have been knocked out. And mixed results for the Aussies at a tennis tournament in Washington overnight, with Jordan Thompson winning through to the second round. That's after a straight sets win against Frenchman Adrian Manorino. But South Aussie Thanasi Kokonakis lost in three sets to Ugo Umber. And that's the 5AA Sport. Now checking 5AA traffic. Louver House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Good morning at Walkley Heights. Got a nasty accident to look out for this morning. Cars going to a Stoby pole there. Brian's Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road is currently clogged both directions. Find another way if you're normally heading that way. They're still clearing that rock slide at Cudley Creek this morning. Gorge Road speeds it out of 50. Quite busy south road at Edwardstown with the camera at Montague Road at Cameron. Pre-order the new Samsung Galaxy Z series from Telstra and get up to $550 in bonus value. When you add to an upfront mobile plan, offer ends August 17 based on purchase of Galaxy Z Fold 1 TV. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Pack away the boardies and bikinis, pull out the uggies and get your brakes checked at Auto Masters. Mostly sunny and 23 today. Showers tomorrow, 19. Cloudy on Saturday, 14. And partly cloudy Sunday, also 14. At the moment, 15. More news as it happens on 5AA. Feeling the burn? Save cash with Cheapers Chips Hot Buys. Cheapers Chips. Cheap. Rexona deodorants, two for $7.99. Radiant commercial blend, two kilo powder or two litre liquid, $7.99. Master food squeeze tomato sauce, $1.49. Continental cup of soup, 99 cents. Check out this week's catalogue for more hot buys in store and online. Save cash and live cheaper with Cheapers Chips Hot Buys now. Celebrate 85 years of Nescafe and win $2,000 instantly. Purchase a participating Nescafe product and enter online for your chance to win. There's a winner every day for 85 days. But hurry, this ends soon. T's and C's at nescafe.com.au When you've been around for over a century, you know a thing or two. And Business SA and Ray White have almost 300 years between them. So when an alliance is formed between Business SA and Ray White Business Sales SA, they're bringing all their experience to your business. Making sure it's in top shape, whether you're buying, selling or somewhere in between. So go on, touch base with the experts. Search Ray White Business Sales SA. Proudly partnered with Business SA. You've come at a good time because the culmination of some challenge bowl activity is coming over the next 30 minutes. After 8.30, I've got some good news for you. We've got the donation limit reached to get to Karen Rolt Noble for the replay of the 97 Sample Grand Final. Rowie and Timmy G in full kit. Can t trying to right wrongs from Timmy's perspective. Rowie wants to go two zip up uh, over Timmy. Uh, between 97 and now, uh, by way of a goal-kicking challenge that you've got to watch on the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream. If you've got a device handy right now, a phone, iPad, computer, or um, digital-enabled sort of television with apps and so forth, I would encourage you right now to tune in to the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream because one earlier challenge involved David Pemberthy going to the Seven News studios on Port Road and putting together a TV news reading audition tape. Which is what you had to do before you got the job. Which is what I had to do. But that said, and I... this will guarantee that I never get Now, a Now, long-time fans of David will be familiar with his former TV work. Hello and welcome to The Punch. I'm David Penberthy, and this is the first edition of The Punch on Sky News from the website of the same name. And in our Canberra Bureau, we're joined by the Minister for Sport, Kate Ellis. Yeah, so he's got... It's a, it was the first and almost the last episode of Punch TV. He's got um, some TV uh, bona fides. <laughs> Okay, I just want to stall long enough to get everyone a chance to get on the live stream. Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream. Um, now, here's the thing. This video will be up on our social media afterwards. So if you haven't caught it or you only get to listen to it, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. Because David looks splendid. He's dressed up in a suit. The hair's done. He's TV ready. Full and Ray Martin. Here is how it went. Hello and welcome.
welcome to the 7 News Early Edition. We begin with the shock not guilty verdict in the case of a former police officer accused of assaulting a prisoner at the Elizabeth Police Station. Former Senior Constable Kim Hanton was caught on camera punching drunk 20-year-old Joseph Ajang in the cells in 2018. Hanton claimed he was acting in self-defence and this morning a magistrate ruled he'd used reasonable and appropriate force in his role as a police officer. <laughs> International superstars Jamiroquai, and that's actually wrong, it should say superstar. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sub-editing on the fly. International superstar Jamiroquai will return to Australia for the first time in 12 years at this year's Harvest Rock Festival. The English funk band will headline the two-day festival along with Paul Kelly, Ocean Alley and Flight Facilities in October at Rymel Park. Tickets for Harvest Rock 2 go on sale in a week. Dozens of Adelaide home buyers are in limbo with half-built homes following the suspension of their builder, Seven Star Construction. Consumer and Business Services stripped it of its licence in response to multiple complaints of long delays and shoddy workmanship <laughs> relating to 27 homes in Modbury and Plimpton. The company's owner, Kwamil Vaselli, has until the end of next week to fight to keep his licence. And that's all from 7 Adelaide's Early Edition. Will and Rosanna will have all the day's top stories in News at 6. That's been your day, Adelaide. Have a good day. Rosanna Manja really came into the studio well. while I was doing it and said, get this off the TV. <laughs> 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 Which uh, I took as a real vote of confidence. It was superb. People on the live stream are absolutely loving it. If you did miss it, Terrible. Uh, make sure you uh, tune in now. I was trying, in all sincerity, I was trying to do it properly. You did I, a good job. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was, my mouth went you know, dry. Only... I was seizing up. I was stumbling over words. I, I mispronounced the, the name of the bloke who got arrested, arrested uh, by the cops. The, the name of the business, the building company that's gone under. That was all fine. Do you know what your biggest mistake was? No. Jumiroquai is a band. I thought it was an Their individual. lead singer is JK, and there's five members. <laughs> oh, so the, the auto cue was right. <laughs> Never argue with the auto cue. All right. Um, lots of reviews coming in of the audition tape. Um, we will get to some of those shortly on the Foodland Simmoaks Facebook and YouTube live stream. Or you can text us on the, um, on the <laughs> like Dutton's text line. Karen's just texted saying, Will, your job at seven is safe. Dave was terrible. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. It Let's go appalling. breaking it out. After that. Feel, uh, feel my feelings are hurt. Hey, uh, got not one but two breaking at eight today. The first is that my understanding is that um, early this morning, about quarter to ten, there's going to be a major statement coming out from the Attorney General, Kaya Ma. The government had um, a well, emergency meeting, a snap meeting last night, uh, not too strong a way of describing it, in response to the, um, the, the somewhat surprising uh, uh, judgment that came out uh, from the High Court yesterday, ruling that the um, the the declaration of the Hell's Angels headquarters at Pondy as a prescribed place under the anti-bikey uh, laws, thus preventing them from congregating there, um, were invalid and illegal. Um, now, the this is something that, that the Malinowskis government inherited from the Marshall government, um, but they was they, they were still confident that the laws were going to the move to, to, to outlaw the Pondy site was going to stand up because the full bench of the SA Supreme Court had backed the state government. But then in a split decision, the High Court said no. My understanding is that the problem, complex legal issue, but the, the problem with the laws is that they were done by regulation, not by legislation. And the word from, uh, from uh, the powers that be here is that the, this government is going to show zero tolerance for anything that benefits bikies, and they're going to go straight back to the drawing board to um, try to make these laws bulletproof in a legal sense. The other breaking eight, this is a really good news story for the Black Forest Primary School community. There's been two incidents in the last three years where wayward vehicles have crashed into the existing pedestrian fence at the uh, pedestrian crossing outside the school there. Um, Later today, the Transport Minister, Tom Coots and Tonus, is going to announce that a new concrete barrier is going to be installed outside the school. Um, Coots is going to say, we've heard loud and clear the community concerns about safety at this crossing following these two accidents and we are taking action. 
So uh, a good win there for the community that has been calling for action to keep the kids safe. 16 minutes after 8, Kai Ma, the Attorney General, beyond with uh, Matthew Pantelis at 10.15 this morning for more on the uh, the bikey headquarters story, which is just a truly fascinating one. Do you want some uh, from real-time feedback to the... Um... <laughs> Not really, but hit me with it anyway. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Michelle says, good paper shaking. Uh, Julie says, stick to your day job. Mike said, hilarious. Yvonne said, don't give up your day job. Michelle said, looks like a segment on Comedy Company. <laughs> Robin says, hilarious. Uh, Nisia says, David, you did so much better than most of us sitting here laughing would have done. Good on you. Oh, Nisia. A- Andrew Huff, uh, newsbreak extraordinaire, <laughs> just said, legend. <laughs> Jane Rowe said, um, uh, I didn't know you had a forehead, David, because you had the hair swept back. Um, I did. Sharon says, good job. Um, oh. Annette said, great job. I think, um, well done, David. Uh, Michelle says, watching on the live feed, you're fantastic. <laughs> Stuart said, awesome job. Not sure you were leaning quite far forward enough. Um, thank you. I can't wait to see Jim and the Miroquois, says Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's oh, superb. Crikey. Now, I need to get to Karen Rolton Oval because there is a contest the likes of which Karen Rolton Oval has never seen before that's going to play it after 8.30 today. Rowie v Timmy G. It's a replay of the 97 Sample Grand Final in a goal-kicking format. I'll be down there with the dude, Tom Duday, and dude. Um, we're going to try and bring you uh, the, the, all the colour and excitement of what we see. Rowie, Timmy G in the full kit. Send him my regards. So the dude's not coming into the studio yeah, then. No, he'll be down there. Say good day to him for me. Maybe he might be an insight into the special comments future of the dude. Who knows? Well, On debut. Absolutely. Uh, we'll check traffic and uh, come back uh, with Lucy taking over with you, David, in just a moment. Thanks, Will. Nasty crash to look out for this morning at Walkley Heights. Cars going into a stovey pole there. Bridge Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road will be closed throughout the morning. Avoid that area if you're normally heading that way. Still clearing up that rock slide at Cudley Creek. Gorge Road near Torrance Road. She's down to 50. Quite busy Anzac Highway at Marine Road with the camera doors road at Ascot Park. For a Thursday night treat, take on your best ever pork sausage rolls tonight. Find this and many other easy recipes at pork.com.au and get some pork on your fork. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. South Australia boasts many one-of-a-kind destinations, but only one has the best local produce, super specials, cheap eats, pantry essentials and more. With over 70 traders under one roof, the Adelaide Central Market has something for everyone. It's open every Tuesday to Saturday with late-night trading Friday, plus live music and free kids' activities on Saturday. If you can't visit the market, order online for home delivery every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. AdelaideCentralMarket.com Will retirement living suit you? You're invited to Aveo's free open home events to get a sneak peek of the lifestyle you could enjoy. Come along with family and friends to explore our communities, inspect our display homes, discover our social activities and chat with our friendly team. With four events across Adelaide from the 5th to the 10th of August, there's sure to be one near you. Take the first step and search Aveo Open Home today. RSVP is essential. Now, Lisa, you know that I love my local Mitre 10, or as we in the know like to call it, the other hardware store. It's my one-stop shop for all my DIY jobs, be it something indoors that needs to be fixed, or more likely, something out in the garden. They'll have everything you need, and the staff are great. They'll happily give you advice on the best products to help you get all of those jobs done. So if you are planning some home improvements, or have some fix-it jobs to do, or just want to spruce things up a bit around the home or in the garden, head into your local Mighty Helpful Mitre 10. For great prices on the right products for the job, along with helpful advice, choose the other hardware store. Mighty Helpful Mitre 10. Celebrate 85 years of Nescafe and win $2,000 instantly. Purchase a participating Nescafe product and enter online for your chance to win. There's a winner every day for 85 days. But hurry, this ends soon. T's and C's at nescafe.com.au. Rosanna Mangiarelli here from 7 News. Join me and Will Goodings for Adelaide's leading news hour, 7 News, tonight at 6 o'clock. Thanks to Duncan Bashir Hannan, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 8.20, the band is back together, Dave. We were just mentioning Will's <laughs> already jetted out of the building to get down to Karen Rolton Oval for an 8.35 kicking contest with Rowie and Timmy G. So... I'm just sitting here pushing the buttons for a bit. Misty watercoloured memories, Luce. Only a few weeks ago we were doing this prior to the break. Good to have you back out, out of your, uh, your your glass container 
And back in the studio. Thank you. Uh, just another <laughs> message here, which many people have made the comment on based on your TV audition reel, Dave. David, a face for radio. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Now, Rob, I've got to say, Rob... That's, Come on, folks, my mum's listening to this. But that's also not a... Um, a joke we've never heard before. It's the it's the radio industry's favourite joke. Oh, yeah. That everyone's 100%. got a face for radio. 100%. Now, while Will makes his way to Catherine, uh, not Catherine House, Karen Rolton Oval, <laughs> I should say, uh, during the week we've been lucky to, to reflect on what the services of Hutt Street Centre do and, of course, those of Catherine House. And uh, earlier in the week, Will and both of you, David, caught up with Chelsea, a client of Catherine House. We'll listen to your chat now. David, over the course of Undy Drive Week, one of the things we do um, as part of tradition now, really, is speak with some of the clients of Catherine House and Hutt Street Centre, because mm. there's no better way to get an insight into the wonderful work these charities do than hearing it from the people who rely on it and benefit the most from it. Um, and today, we're delighted to be joined in the studio by Chelsea, from uh, who's receiving some help from Catherine House. Chelsea, good morning to you, and thank you for your time. Good morning, guys. Well, thanks for having me in today. No, it's great to have you here, Chelsea, because, you know, we want to sort of put the, the, the human face to the, the people that um, the Undy Drive is all about. So it's, it's great that you've, you've um, made the time to, to come in. So tell us a bit about the, how long have you been being looked after by Catherine House, and how did you sort of wind up re having to rely on their services? So I've been at Catherine house for about four months now going on five but I have been kind of without secure accommodation for about nine months now so you know since before Christmas last year and I came to Catherine House because as an unemployed student who you know has two cats <laughs> and <laughs> parents live in another state it's Secure accommodation isn't really my friend at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I was kind of in a domestic and family violence um, relationship where we were, my partner and I were living together and that relationship dissolved. And from there, I kind of bounced from share house to share house, couch surfing, basically sleeping where I put my head down. Yeah which sounds kind of sad, but <laughs> it's the reality of life. And depressingly common too these days. It mm. is. Particularly it, in the middle of a cost of living squeeze. Yes, and you see it all through the city as well, people sleeping rough. I came to Catherine House because I was living temporarily with my grandma. So at the moment, she's still fostering my two cats. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I can't have them at Catherine House. Mm. And I was going for a run for my mental health, because, you know, it's supposed to be good for you or something. Yeah. <laughs> I came across the... United Western Homelessness Service in Port Adelaide and I just thought ah what's the worst that can come out of it like it's I am a homeless tis a homeless service go from there mm, mm. so they got me on to Catherine House I put in I think I put in five or six referrals to all different things Catherine House was the only one that called me back yeah right so about six weeks later I was doing a driving lesson with my grandma and we were going down Main North Road. I got the phone call from Catherine House, so I pulled the car over and I cried. Yeah, yeah. And I've uh, been there ever since. Why do you, wow. why, why do you, well, I mean, we know Catherine House are wonderful. Uh, we've dealt with them for years and heard so many stories like yours where they've come to people's help. Why do you think they were the ones, the only ones that called you back? Is it because they have a better understanding of your personal issues, do you think? Is it an expertise thing? I think it actually comes from being a women-centred organisation. Mm. The Me being a woman reaching out saying I need help, they were the first people to jump up and mm. say, yes, that's what we're here to do, we're here to help. Because everything else that I applied for, um, I think it was Unity, I th made some phone calls to the Foundry, Common Ground, things like that. They're all mixed gender, so mm. they have as, twice as many applications as Catherine House did. Yeah, right. Having said that, though, Catherine House gets inundated with applications every day. And things kind of just get triaged. Yeah. It sounds like you you were the, the, based on the timeline that you've talked about and the gap between you you seeking their help and mm. and sort of finding your own way. Just just as you as you put it, sleeping over your head went down. Was it a real mental hurdle to get to the point of going? Actually, I need external help here. Oh yes, yes. I think. There was about three months where I kind of went, nope, I'm not going to admit that I need help. I'm mm. not going to admit that I am homeless, even though I'm kind of living my life out of a storage unit and I'm carting my cats around with me. 
just we're just going to pretend that this isn't an issue. So it kind of wasn't really until I was staying at my grandma's house and she was going, look, I love you, but you kind of can't stay here forever. And that's kind of when I started going, mm. okay, I need to do something about this. But mm. then that sent me into a real depression spiral. So I became really suicidal and I was kind of going, well, I don't have a job. I don't have a home, kind of a burden on society. So if I hadn't made that first step to step into United Western, then probably wouldn't be here talking to you guys today. Well, it's great that you did, and it's great that you've, you've got that help. It's sad, though, to think that everything you're describing seems to sort of point, Chelsea, to this sort of stigma that exists about mm. homelessness almost being a tag, a dehumanising sort of oh, tag for definitely. people. Which is on, on us, it's on the community, not on the person who was homeless. Mm. Mm. Have you been able to continue your study? So I'm in the process of talking to Sharon, who's the uh, education and employment officer at Catherine House, and she is an absolute legend, love her. And I'm in the process of applying for something called the Kim 80 Scholarship, which is a scholarship put in place for women at Catherine House to get funding to go to university. So they pay wow. for uni fees and all your textbooks and things like that. So I've been doing... A lot of work in the media, you know, mm. radio, did a couple of things with ABC, been in the paper recently, which is all very exciting. I'm loving it. That's good. Um, so I'm going to go on to do foundation studies for 2024. And then from there, I'm going to reapply for the Kim 80 scholarship to get into media or activism or journalism. Not wow. quite sure yet. One of those three. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and look, sitting here talking to you now, you're clearly very smart you're phenomenally articulate you tell your story in a really compelling way and telling a story in a compelling way is 99 percent of the skills required to go <laughs> yeah. into the yeah. line of work you desire to to pursue yeah. so yeah. i reckon you've got a bright future oh thank you it's all the drama classes i took in high school <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully there'll be less real life drama though oh yes because it sounds like there's a path out of this for you I'm really hoping there is because I've never enjoyed a job more than I have than my time in the media. I'm not even getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's that saying? If you do something you love, it's not like work. What is yeah, it? Yeah, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, never we work often a day do. In your life. We make that joke here a lot. Yeah, yeah. even you know, even if you have the rare bad day, you have well, beats working in a foundry or something like that. You yeah, know, like mm. we often do joke. You you do you would do this job for free. Yeah, because right. you get to meet people like you, which is what makes it great. Yeah. Different Thank you so much for coming in, Chelsea. That story just speaks volumes mm. about about well, you per, obviously personally, but indeed the wonderful work Catherine House do. Because mm. I don't, because I think people through our chats with Catherine House would know the support they provide for people that have come from domestic violence scenarios or yeah. people that come from that are homeless. But then to hear there's a scholarship program for people who want to go on to study in university and things like that too. You start, it's an insight that starts to give you a bit of a sense as to how big this organisation is and how big they think about their clients yes. as well. So thank you so much for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. Good on you, Chelsea. Lovely Thanks. to meet you. Europe is calling. You're invited to the Phil Hoffman Travel European Showcase on Saturday the 26th of August from 10am to 3pm at our Glenelg Sky Deck. Enjoy an afternoon of fun, food and travel as we inspire you with endless possibilities for your next European getaway. With free entry, free travel talks, airfare experts, European touring specialists and exclusive offers, you won't want to miss this. Register your attendance at pht.com.au. If you're in the market for a new car, you've got to put the new Cherry Emota 5 from Gler Cher Cherry Glen Osmond on your list. That is Cherry Glen Osmond. For starters, it's ready for immediate delivery, which means absolutely no waiting. They also have low mileage demo models ready for immediate delivery. And from just 33000 at drive away, it's even less for a demo. The Cherry Emota 5 has the sort of features you'd expect to find in a car three times its price. Heated seats, automatic locking and unlocking, remote engine start, 360 degree camera, the list just goes on. Plus, the Cherry Emota 5 comes with a seven-year warranty, five-star five safety and fixed price servicing, all from 33k drive away with immediate delivery. Visit gocherry.com.au or call into Cherry Glen Osmond next to Formula Honda. This is Adelaide's 5AA.
Mostly sunny and 23. With the 8.30 News, I'm Kendall Brettig. Planning a function? Speak to the Adelaide Convention Centre team to elevate your vision for your next event. Major crash officers are at the scene of an horrific accident at Northfield. Peter Caldicott from Seven News is there and says a car left Brian's Road and took out a stoby pole. A witness who happened to be driving home at the time, he saw the crash, he stopped, he tried to help. And another lady who described just the horrific sound, it woke her up at 4.30 this morning. She said it sounded like shattering glass. And Brian's Road is closed in both directions between Hoods Road and South Terrace. A new levy is being proposed as part of a range of measures to increase funding for aged care. The peak body representing the sector believes some super should be locked away to help pay for care in later life. A federal government task force is looking at ways to make the sector more sustainable. Deputy Opposition Leader Susan Lee says another levy isn't the right approach, but she's open to working with Labor on the issue. We don't think new taxes are necessarily the answer, but we do want to work constructively with the government for sustainable solutions in aged care, because it's just too important to get wrong. Scientists believe they've discovered a life-changing pill to kill cancer tumours. Chandra Llewellyn reports. The pill targets a protein previously thought untreatable and is found in most cancers. The drug has been tested on different cancers including brain, ovarian and skin and proven to be successful. News Corp reports the pill has been developed in Los Angeles at one of the largest cancer centres in the United States. Doctors say the results are promising and there have been no reported side effects in the first patient to receive the pill. An inquiry has found the ACT chief prosecutor knowingly lied to the Supreme Court. The findings reportedly reveal Shane Drumgold engaged in serious malpractice and grossly unethical conduct during the sexual assault trial of Bruce Lerman. The report's been handed to the ACT government but it won't be publicly released till the end of the month. And Donald Trump is expected to appear in person tomorrow for his arraignment relating to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. More from US correspondent Alison Petrowski. The former US president was given the option to appear virtually but is opting to travel to Washington DC from New Jersey. Roads are being blocked off around the E. Barrett Prettyman courthouse this morning. Republican party members are throwing their support behind Donald Trump, including his rival for the Republican nomination, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The reality is a D.C. jury would indict a ham sandwich and convict a ham sandwich if it was a Republican ham sandwich. Special counsel Jack Smith says he will ask for a speedy trial. He wants it to be over before Americans go to the polls in November next year. A TikTok video has gone viral of two fake tradies dressed in high vis appearing to sneak past security at the Adelaide Oval before the showdown. But not everyone's convinced they got in for free, with one person commenting, you can hear the beep of the scan ticket as they pass. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Ken Hall Plumbers, your local plumber for block drains. Trusted since 1983. Give Ken a call. And Tom Ren, you don't need to sneak in, do you? No, well, maybe next time I'll get my tradies gear. I'll have to buy some, Kendall. Let's start with football. Speculation is Mountain Gold Coast will land Damien Hardwick as their next coach. CEO Mark Evans is in Europe trying to land the former Richmond coach who's currently on a holiday. Well, Harry Himmelberg has turned his back on free agency to sign a six-year contract extension with the Giants. The 27-year-old so far played 145 games, kicking 160 goals. Meantime, Brisbane defender Jack Payne has signed a five-year contract extension with Brisbane. And North Melbourne's Aaron Hall is the latest AFL veteran to hang up the boots while it's selection night tonight for both the Crows and Port Adelaide. Let's go to the world game. Australia is narrowing its focus on Denmark with their round of 16 clash locked in. Danish coach Lars Sondergaard is expecting the Matildas to be full of confidence, but he suggests the home crowd support might work against them if things go down to the wire on Monday night. The whole nation is standing behind them, and I think that's uh, important for them. It could also be pressure when the game go into the second half and it's still nil-nil and then everything can happen. Well, I can't wait for it. Audio thanks to Optus Sport. Elsewhere, Brazil has been held to a nil-all draw against Jamaica, who are now through to the knockout stages for the first time ever, alongside France, who topped that group. In other games, South Africa had a stunning win over Italy 3-2, while Sweden took care of Argentina 2-0, meaning both Italy and Argentina have been knocked out.
And that's the 5AA Sport. Now to the traffic. Luther House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Good morning at Walkley Heights. Look out for a car or a stovey pole today. Bridge Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road will be closed both directions throughout the morning. Avoid that area if you're normally heading that way. Blackwood got reports of a smash on Main Road near Golfie Road. Got a few delays just near Hungry Jacks there and quite busy OG Road at Felixstone. Cameras, Fisher Street, Malvern and Montague Road at Cabin. Style and save with freedom. Right now, buy any item store wide and get your second item half price. Don't miss out. Sale ends Monday only at Freedom. Adelaide's most accurate traffic. On 5AA. Pack away the bikinis and boardies, pull out the woolies and get your brakes checked at Automasters. Mostly sunny in 23, showers tomorrow 19, cloudy on Saturday down to 14 and partly cloudy Sunday also 14. At the moment 16. More news as it happens on 5AA. It's been 26 years since... It's all over! Points. Norwood winning the 97 Grand Final by a whopping 73 points. Now, thanks to the 5AA Undy Drive, this is Port Adelaide's shot at redemption. It's Norwood versus Port. Rowie versus Timmy G. Yeah. Now, let's go live to Karen Rolton Oval with Will Goodings. Yeah, good morning to you. We're standing in the southwest pocket of Karen Rolton Oval, right on the 50 metre line. A uh, ground name for one of South Australia's sporting greats. Whether the spectacle we see over the next 10 minutes lives up to that name and legacy remains to be seen. If you're not watching, jump on the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream right now because I'm joined by my special comments assistant extraordinaire, Tom Duda. Hey, dude, good morning to you. Good morning. It is an absolute pleasure to be here and even more of a pleasure to watch these two warm up. Well, it is a magnificent day. I say the sun is out. Um, the gods are shining on what will be a replay of a, um, well, frankly, not particularly competitive grand final 26 years ago. We'll set the scene in a moment in terms of what the task is. It's a goal-kicking challenge. But let's start with you, Timmy G. This is a real opportunity to right some wrongs, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I know I heard Stephen earlier have a crack at uh, what happened to us in that 97 grand final. And, you know, there's a few factors that came into it. We were in the AFL, they weren't. So uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that made a little bit of a difference to our squad. But, you know what, we, we we're going to make amends for that today. Uh, Rowie, um, it, do you feel the pressure having to keep the legacy of the 97 uh, grand final win no, alive? No, None no, whatsoever. No, 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 no be like shelling peas. <laughs> fella next to me. I, I want some time restraints on it and I don't oh, want to run up oh, any longer oh, than 60 oh, metres oh. and he's got to kick it within 10 seconds, yeah. Timmy. Yeah. All right? So grab it, kick it, grab it, kick it. No big long, because they tend to cheat. <laughs> we raised the $1,500 for the, uh, the Undy Drive well done, within no minutes. Problem. Took no time whatsoever. In fact, we've smashed it. People want to see this contest. Part of the challenge, not only was it a competition, was to see you guys Turn back the clock, get in the full dress kit. Turn back time. Can we get a bit of a look on for the people watching on the well, Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube I'll live stream? First. This is the old Timmy mate. G. This is the 97 Skernsey. This, this is, is literally the 97 yep. with the McLaren Vale Foodland sponsor, yeah. cash converters, the full lace up. I tell you what, for people not watching, Timmy G still cutting a fine figure as well. well the right. number one says. Especially <laughs> contrasted to our. Uh, our competitor here. <laughs> now, now, I mean, <laughs> Rowie hasn't donned the lace-up. What he's got is the zip-up lycra. And to suggest it's not fitting as well as it once nah, did. keep them on. Keep them oh, dearie me. No, on. let's not do the pants. We it saw is the undie drive, oh, but we don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Rowie might I need to be the beneficiary of the undie drive. This is the 93 Neil Craig number. The one-piece little... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> But I'll keep them on. Okay, so gentlemen, you're stripped and ready to go. go. Timmy G will go first. Thank you. From the, the, and, the, and dude, I'll need a bit of your assistance here just to set this up for people at home. We've got cones set up in five separate spots in an arc that I reckon is what? 20 metres out from goal? Yeah, at, at most. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think there's every chance we see more hamstrings pinged than goals kicked today. <laughs> Rowie is looking ginger even just walking to the first station. So what we'll do is we'll get Timmy to complete one lap round the world. And then we'll get Early Stephen Rowe. Rowe. Early booze. So Timmy G's underway. He's under pressure from Rowe, who's given him the booze. Timmy has made oh. decent contact and dribbled it through. Decent contact. I'm not sure Didn't about make decent it on the contact. But uh, well, you know, it spanned the right direction. <laughs> we'll give him that much. Rowe's contesting that it didn't make the distance on the full, but it travelled through the big sticks. 
and the umpire said all clear. One from one for Timmy G. Oh, the second one up. was confident. He leaned back and put it straight over the goal umpire's hat. A lot of Timmy, more momentum on that one, Will. It was. Yes. You, like, you think, kicked do, through it. Do you, you warm up in a scenario like this? You do. Uh, I did watch their warm up before. It, it wasn't uh, wasn't great. There was probably only a few kicks at about five metres apart. I think that's all they thought they had in them. <laughs> but Timmy, Timmy's proving that wrong at the moment. He's on the third station now. It's a 45 degree angle again, about 20 metres out, and again. He's made no mistake. He's laying down the gauntlet for Stephen Rowe here, who's starting to sweat. I mean, he was sweating already just yeah, from the walk from the 50 job. metre line to the. Uh, Look, he's doing a little nervous dance at the moment, the nervous jig. So if Timmy G kicks this, it'll be four from four. He's now in the left hand forward pocket on, and his right foot, he's put it he's through gone. again. I think he might have been training, Timmy. He wants to. He wants to exercise the demons of 97, and he could, if he kicks truly here, it'll be five from five. And in the meantime, Stephen Rose Lycra has popped open. <laughs> the zipper has failed, and so he's revealing that uh, maybe he's not conditioned for the event. He makes it five from five, Timmy G. He's five from five. He gets out the finger guns, and he's celebrating. 30 metres from uh, goal. It was a clinical performance. 97 grand final. I was born in 97. I've been on this earth for 26 years, and that might be the most clinical performance I've ever seen. <laughs> well, you heard it there. Tom Duday, special comments from right on the 50 metre line. Karen rolt Noble. Stephen Rowe's got the pants oh, on because oh, five the, steps, if you don't mind. the shorts weren't g rated and his first kick... That is oh, clean. He's cleared it at calf goalpost height. Magnificent work, Rowie. He didn't run. He ambled over to the second <laughs> cone. He's now on a 45-degree angle. He's pulled back. it slightly to the left. Oh, it came back. Mm. Dawson Showdown-esque. That brought it back. <laughs> it really had a bit of the Buddy Franklin left to right there. And uh, Rowie's starting to grow in confidence. He's gesturing to the gathered... Well, there's no one here but us. But he gathered the, ima the imaginary group of fans and said, get a piece of this. The Lycra expands even ever slightly more as he steadies himself over this one. And it's three from three for Rowe. Oh, Norden Port, significantly closer than it was back 26 years ago in 1997. This if, is a tough one. This is the tough one. Right side for the right footer. He just leant back and he pulled it to the oh, near no. side. He's pulled it to the near side, which gives Port Adelaide and Timmy Jennifer the win. And for the audience, I think Rowie is absolutely heartbroken. He's given up, and instead of dawdling to the next cone, he's literally walked over, picked up the ball. He's doing the Charlie Brown kick the ball. He's sulking here. He, he, really, he really is. He's walked in five metres out from goal, and he sent that one into orbit. He's kicked it into current. If you're, if you're near the public toilets opposite of Karen Rolt Noble, you'll find you get yourself a footy as a result of that. He's fired off a gesture that's not safe for work. Done a hamstring in the process. He's warming himself up now on the uh, on the uh, the beautiful picket fence here at Karen Rolt Noble. But at the end of the day, it's Timmy G. Timmy G. Winning one back for Port Adelaide. I mean, he didn't he didn't really need. They, he, he won about nine premierships. Timmy yeah. G. I'm not sure if you're but familiar what, with. What's them. another one? Really? What's another one? I think yeah. the biggest the biggest achievement of today is that Rowie's Lycra has stayed on, <laughs> and at times looked looked like it was gone forever. It's come back and zipped up entirely. The problem Thankfully. with the Lycra for people at home that aren't witnessing this is that it's all a, it's a one piece, um, yeah. and there's a bit of the downward area that we're seeing that we probably didn't need to. Well, now, Billy's, Billy's sponsor as well. I think he's had a to the too many Billy's. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm exhausted. To the victors go the spoils. Timmy G, congratulations to you. Uh, it's all for Hutch Street and Catherine House. I mean, me, me and him are going straight to hospital for, uh, <laughs> just to get those fibres torn back onto them. That was terrible. The first one looked a little tight, Timmy. Oh, yeah. A little tight. Just dribbled it through, but from there you felt good. Yeah, all the way through after that. Uh, How'd you go, mate? You're a guitarist, aren't you? You want to play Smoke on the Water on my hamstring? <laughs> <laughs> I have that tight. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no, the best man won. Well done. Even a blind squirrel can trip over a nut. Every day. <laughs> was it my forte goal kicking? Mm. My nickname was Shotgun, <laughs> as you can see. But oh. not happy to lose to you. Oh, well. You treated it too seriously. No, I know it's Hutch Street. I know all of that. Yeah, can it's we, can driver. We... we love it. But God, you'll feel, ooh, can't miss, I can't miss. Can we swap the flag for it? Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> You are, gentlemen, <laughs> absolute legends. Thank you on behalf of us for the five double Andy drivers participating and raising so much money for Catherine House at the Hutt Street Centre. Pleasure. Rowie, <laughs> put some clothes on. <laughs> nah, keep it as is. We're uh, enjoying Dude, it. any final thoughts from what you saw? I mean, you've, you've been witness to some great uh, athletic feats over the course of your career, obviously. This right up there. Mm. Um, I think, yeah, Rowie's ability to, you know, put all the hamstring talk 
behind yep. and just slot the first three was was incredible. And Timmy just five for five as if it was you know just shell and peas. He's he's done that before. Who would win this competition down at the club? I mean, obviously you'd move the cones out ever so slightly. Ah, uh, look, I would not be up there. Right. Um, I'll tell you a little a smoky. Braden Cook in the preseason, we keep really? track of our uh, goal kicking, and uh, he was up there all along. But obviously, Tex Fog, the Fords, they they do that stuff a bit more than me. So this is I'm the, I'm down the other end. Those those guys can do that. That see how easy it looks though. Yeah, That's I know. The hard stuff done down the other end of the ground. Exactly. So. They need to. Maybe next year you can be down there sort of disrupting the action. You might yeah, have down there. maybe I'll just do a Brody Smith and get all the way forward and not defend and <laughs> leave, leave my bloke out there. Saw him 15 metres out from goal last game. I did thought he got lost. Yeah, it apparently was he was meant to be playing in the goal square down deep as well. Unbelievable. That's not what he does. Hey, dude, thank you. We appreciate it. Pleasure. A hell of a debut as a special comments man as well. Maybe we'll see you in the 5 AA commentary box one day. Absolutely. Good stuff, dude. Thank you. Back to you guys at, uh, in the studio in Highmarsh Square. Awesome stuff, Will and Tom. Thank you so much for that. And... Uh, Got to say, with Rowey seeing the ball like a watermelon for a little while there, worried it was going to go to a five-all draw and extra time, and uh, you could uh, see the staff over the road of the RAB bracing themselves for uh, two urgent admissions if it had dragged on. But brilliant work for a brilliant cause, and uh, thanks to everybody who donated, and uh, we'll keep the donations rolling through until nine o'clock. Just wanted to highlight a few of those donations that have come in. The Crojack podcast. Hey, love. we love those guys. Go, Crom. Yeah, you know what the Crom have donated? $119. <laughs> a huge... Uh, never, that joke never gets old. A huge thank you to the Crojack podcast. Also, a massive thank you to Dr. Derek McNair, our favourite Scottish vet, our 5AA vet, located there on the parade, donated $500 as well. Oh, fantastic. So, thank you, Dr. Derek. Alison, Jane, David... Oh, sorry, David, that's you who's donated. Thank you. Uh, Luke, Marcia, Sharon, Philip, thank you all for donating this morning to get us down to Karen Rolton Oval. When we come back, we've got a story to bring to you that's only happened this morning. Whilst the footy kicking's been going on, we're going to catch up with Casey Trelaw from 7 News. And in exciting news, because I'm in control for the last 10 minutes. Oh, no. There's going to be a surprise challenge bowl Ooh, that we're going to manage one. to squeeze in. I thought uh, we were done for the day. Well... We're full of surprises here at the Undy Drive. Uh, we will check your traffic, but when we come back, Casey Trelaw from 7 News. Thanks, Will. At Walkley Heights, current Ustobi Pole. That's on Bridge Road near South Terrace. Brian's Road will be closed both directions throughout the morning, seeing really heavy lanes at Grand Junction Road and Hampstead Road as well. Blackwood reports of a smash on Main Road near Golfie Road. Quite busy OG Road at Felixstowe. Really slow, said Old Road to Plains with a camera Edward Street at Till Park. Are you an RAA member? Show your member card across SA to unlock member savings. For more info, search RAA member benefits. Adelaide's most accurate traffic. On 5AA. On 5AA mornings today, the Transport Infrastructure and Energy Minister Tom Coots and Tonus will be in the studio taking your calls. We'll look at the issue of the state government losing a High Court challenge, taking over the Hells Angels compound at Pondy. And is a levy needed to fund aged care into the future? Those stories and more coming up from Nine. I'm Matthew Pantelis, looking forward to your company. Right now, it's time to save at Decor Lighting with their 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 50% off sale. Lighting, ceiling fan and more. More up to 50% off. Decor right with Decor Lighting. 24 The Parade Norwood. Feeling the burn? Save cash with Cheapest Chips Hot Buys. Cheapest Chips. Cheap, 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 cheap. Rexona deodorants, two for seven ninety nine. Radiant commercial blend, two kilo powder or two litre liquid, seven ninety nine. Master food squeezed tomato sauce, one forty nine. Continental cup of soup, ninety nine cents. Check out this week's catalogue for more hot buys in store and online. Save cash and live cheaper with cheapest chips hot buys now. Are you ready for massive Mazda savings? Mawson Lakes Mazda is having a huge demo clearance across the entire Mazda range. We are overstocked on current model Mazda demos that need to go. So be quick to snap up a demo deal in your favourite model and colour. There is no better time to take advantage of these amazing deals. Be quick, stocks won't last at these prices. Mawson Lakes Mazda, just a short drive from the city, Salisbury Highway. For most business PC brands, a four-hour service guarantee means they will call you back in four hours. But at Leader Computers, a four-hour service guarantee on Leader's business range means they'll actually come to your work site and have you back in business inside the four hours. That's right, Luce. Leader Computers, they're made right here in Adelaide with better service, better support and speedy turnaround times. 
Grow your business and get behind a leader. Find your local dealer at leadersystems.com.au. When you buy a leader computer, you are buying a computer made here in Adelaide. You're dealing with people that live here in Adelaide, and when it comes to servicing or support, it all happens, you guessed it, right here in Adelaide, not overseas or interstate. And that means that leader computers don't have to send anything off for repair. They take care of everything here. Check out their website, leadercomputers.com.au. Thanks to Duncan Bashir-Hannon, providing legal services for all South Australians. They're with you, for you. dbh.com.au Breakfast on 5AA, David Penberthy and Will Goodings. Massive thank you to Duncan Bashir-Hannon, of course, for being our Undy Drive sponsor Fantastic all of this week. Fantastic law firm. They, they sued me. They did an excellent job. They, and within their over 50 years of business, they've managed to sue you, David. Uh, but visit dbhlawyers at dbh.com.au. Thank you, Duncan Bashir-Hannon, for getting involved with our Undie Drive this week. Now, I did just tease a last-minute challenge bowl. We will get to that shortly. But we'd just like to bring in Casey Trelaw to the conversation from 7 News. She's broken an incredible story, which will make a lot of South Australians very happy, I'm sure, about it. Casey, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How are you? We are good, Casey. This is uh, one scoop well worth trumpeting about, to use a bit of a lame <laughs> pun there, by way of an intro. Absolutely. Look, guys, this is so exciting. South Australia hasn't had elephants here for 30 years. Um, but look, Zoos SA now has plans to bring three of them here. Uh, the plans will be to have them housed at Minato uh, Safari Park, which is, of course, about an hour from Adelaide. And look, these elephants are Asian elephants. So two of them are going to come from Perth Zoo, one from Auckland Zoo, and two uh, two of them will be females. Now, in terms of uh, the welfare and management of elephants, we've come a long way. You may you may remember the very tiny enclosure that still sits at, at Adelaide Zoo. Well, these elephants will be in this big open space, but part of that animal welfare is actually having females together and, and developing those social constructs as well. So this will just be incredible to see, you know, these elephants out in the open living together out at Monato and hopefully all going well, we should see them there by 2025. So Casey, do you, um, is it your understanding that the plan is to eventually get them breeding as well? Because Monato's had a terrific result. I think at the moment they've got cheetah cubs there. They've um, had giraffes born, uh, chimpanzees. It's been working brilliantly in terms of protecting or, or, or rather, um, you know, I guess, yeah, protecting the longevity of many of these endangered species. Is that the is that the elephant plan too? Absolutely. Look, there has been quite a baby boom we've seen over recent years at Minato, but uh, the females that are coming over, they're actually just a little bit past that breeding age, but the male, he's still in his prime, so he will certainly... Uh, be used potentially for breeding programs and in collaboration with other zoos. But the facilities they're planning on building will actually be big enough to potentially house five or more. So hopefully down the track we will see maybe the chance to see more elephants uh, come to Monato, call Monato home. Hopefully then they might be sort of breeding age females as well. And, and maybe one day wouldn't that be cool to see some pitter-patter uh, baby elephant feet there at Monado, Zoo, at Monado Safari Park. Casey, thank you so much for giving us that excellent news. Casey Trelaw there from seven i believe there is a fundraising effort you'll be able to hear all those details with how to contribute to the elephants to monato it is amazing thinking Luce, about how um much more enlightened the world has become in a very short space of time because as a kid in the 70s i can remember going to the adelaide zoo and seeing Samorn, the elephant who was a, a a gift from the king of thailand to adelaide for the adelaide zoo and Samorn was there for for years but you could ride her. Mm. You could ride Simone as a kid around the zoo. And um, as, as Casey alluded to, that enclosure that she was kept in was, was, was terrible. But it was in, in keeping with practice the world over. But this is why Monado is such a special place. You know, the fact that they can roam around as if they, they, they were in their, in their traditional home. Very exciting. Uh, any other exciting news? <laughs> Now, we just had Tom Duday as part of the Undie Drive, all thanks to Leader Computers, of course, Australia's largest Aussie-owned PC manufacturer right here in Adelaide. But I'd like to introduce a challenge for 6.20 tomorrow morning, between now and 6.20. Now, this man doesn't know about his challenge yet, but he's about to hear it live on air. Tom Wren, 
We're going to do karaoke with Rennie at <laughs> 6.20 tomorrow morning. If we can raise another $500, just to people going about their day, chip in five, $5 is, is all we need to get us across the line for this one, I think. If people want to hear Tom Wren sing at oh. 6.20 in his sport tomorrow morning, another $500 by then at 5AAUndyDrive.com.au. This is what's known as money for jam because... Tom needs no encouragement to sing. So we've picked the sweet spot here. I've been to karaoke with Tom well, Wren. It might, it might be full action. But it might be people paying to not hear him sing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll accept that as well. Some people don't necessarily want to hear Gloria, Tom. I know that is your oh, song. Yeah, but, it is. He does it really well. But $500. Tell you what, if we get to 1000 by 620 someone else can pick the song. Oh, that's a good idea. So Tom Wren, karaoke, 6.20 tomorrow morning. So we've still got a bit of time to raise a bit of money. Let's quickly check Fuel Watch before Behind Closed Doors. All thanks to RAA. Download the free RAA app today to find the cheapest fuel in an instant. It is sitting at the $1.70s at the moment across Adelaide. Not much alteration there, so probably a good time to fill up. The cheapest diesel we can see is a uh, still cheap in the $1.70s as well. The cheapest unleaded is $1.74 at the OTR on North East Road in Walkerville. Sadly, no live John Blake today. You can see that online, of course, but here is today's Behind Closed Doors, Aussie Fast Transport Solutions, Interstate Freight Distribution, Warehousing and Local Adelaide Couriers. Call Aussie Fast 13 13 64. And you know what? Today, he's got a new victim. Oh. A new victim. You're in, you're in the clear, loose. I'm in the clear. Here we go. <laughs> and when we get behind this is the 5AA Fishing Show. Presented by Ned McHenry. 29 to 7 on your Tuesday. Welcome along. It is the 5AA Fishing Show. Sam Tugwell alongside the great man himself, Ned McHenry. Welcome to you. G'day, Sammy. It's great to be back on with the fishing <laughs> show. We're going to talk about what's biting, what's going on in the fishing world, Sammy. And I've got a couple of hacks to share too, Sammy. Fantastic. Because I love fishing, Sammy. Yes. I love it, Sammy. My life revolves around fishing. And the way I run my life is I go out fishing, catch a couple of fish, then I come back in, run out of the footy field, kick a goal for the crows, then I disappear again, Sammy, because I'm straight back out fishing again. Wonderful work. Yeah, then I'll catch a few more fish, and when it gets a bit slow and the fish stop biting, Sammy, I run back out on the footy field, kick a quick goal for the crows, then I'm straight back out fishing again, Sammy, and that's how I like it. So when you don't see me on the footy field, Sammy, am I sitting on the bench? Yes. No, I'm sitting in my boat, Sammy, and I've got a quick tip for you now, Sammy. Let's quickly fit in our tip of the week. Nettie's Fishing Tip of the Week. Well, for anyone who has an anchor rope and anyone with a boat has an anchor rope, yep. so every 10 metres along the rope, you put a little bit of paint, Sammy, on the rope so you can see how much anchor rope has gone out. So every 10 metres, you use a different colour so you can see straight away how much rope is out at any time. Very clever. Yeah, and here's another tip, Sammy. Yeah. In between each of those paint marks, you put another mark if you kick a goal. So anytime you're out fishing, you can see at a glance how many goals you've kicked for the crows. How long did it take you to work that out as a trick? Oh, not long, and I'm not sure how many people can use that tip, Sammy, but Tex Walker does, and his anchor rope stretches from here to Tasmania. <laughs> the fishing show, 5AA fishing show with Ned Beck Henry is Tuesday night, 6.30 to 7, and then, of course, on Wednesdays, it's driving with Dixon, Charlie Dixon, from 6.30 to 7. We are out of time this morning. David, remember, 5AA, undydrive.com.au, all thanks to Duncan Bash here, Hannah. We want to do Tom Wren karaoke at 6.20 tomorrow yep. morning. There'll be some more shaming as well, no doubt. But bring it home, folks. If you haven't donated yet, tomorrow is your last official chance. We'll probably have the website open during the day, but we really want to come home with a wet sail during tomorrow's show. So dig deep for the Hut Street Centre and Catherine House. And if you'd like to see videos of David's Channel 7 audition reel and also Rowie and Timmy G's kicking contest, they will be up on all of our Not social media pages straight after the show. Lucy's peerless movie review from yes. yesterday. Easily, I think that's the, like, the hardest we've laughed in this studio ever, isn't it, Lucy? Yeah, the live Blakey is also up online. But also you can see David's TV audition, which I think is far oh, more yes. important. We will catch you tomorrow morning from 6 o'clock. Growing up with Mum was an adventure. She was so strong and independent. Then we noticed she was struggling to manage in her large family home, but wasn't quite ready for aged care. Glen Woodley Estate was perfect. Mum 